Like, total, 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 total could definitely set up a domain if you wanted to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just because I only know expansion. like the boogie, I just think of his domain expansion has to be like a dance floor or something just like completely out there. God damn it. So, like, just imagine him. Oh my god, Tizzle. It's throw in <laughs> chat. <laughs> Big foot domain from Total. Hell yeah. Welcome to the Anime Izakai Podcast, week 11 of the winter 2021 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season of anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stren. Hello, everyone. Next, we have Ku. Yo, yo. Next, we have Justin. Hey, guys. And finally, we have Taylor. Hello. And then we also have Brian joining us later. Um, so before we get started, uh, I guess the big news this week, uh, Demon Slayer movie was announced for theaters April 23rd yeah. here in, it's, it's US, I don't know if NA or just US, but April 23rd in regular and IMAX, so get your IMAX tickets ready. Uh, if April you're not 9th. getting in an IMAX, what are you, what are you doing with your life, you know? Yeah, is, so. is it April 9th everywhere or just for us? <laughs> it's, uh, it's when tickets go on sale, so yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm just for okay. the North yeah. America, yeah, April 9th. And then, okay. and then also the digital release is June 22nd, so we can't catch it in theaters, just the digital release too. So that's nice. We catch it in yeah, theaters. I'm, I'm glad that they're it. giving that option, and especially in such a short like time period, you're not waiting, you know, much yeah. longer. Yeah. We're so. catching that movie in uh, theaters and we're catching COVID. <laughs> not you, not you, sir, oh. Mr. Not Mr. Me. Vaccinated, <laughs> Miss, Mr. Lied on his application, <laughs> cut the line. <laughs> Why? <laughs> drama. I'm just. Okay, I work at a school district. Uh, now, any government, ever any government officials in the chat listening? It's uh, this guy down, <laughs> down here somewhere. Maybe up here. I don't know where no, he is. No, it was, it was down. That's oh, perfect. No, he's, I'm yeah, he's down here. Down here. Down here. I here you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then um, so that's the, that's the movie for Mugen Train, and then um, her to just say the uh, My Hero Academia manga is on the final arc, so. I just saw that too. It's crazy. I don't read the manga. Crazy that it started in no. 2014. I thought it was like I, I didn't know it was. It, it didn't feel that long ago since it started. So, yeah, no, but what's crazy yeah. too is like uh, is Shonen Jump's lost so many big like they're, they're losing so many like big uh, big yep. time manga like just, was just, the last couple years. Just like that super eye patch video said that everyone loves to reference. I know, dude. That guy's a god. He's, He's so good. So amazing. Oh my god, I love him. <laughs> that amount of work, insane. I applaud you, super eye patch wolf, and it would be very nice if you. Watch this podcast. <laughs> if you're there, if you're oh, listening, wow. if you're listening, wow. you're a big fan. And hey, man, we wow. got to take all the shots we can. Yep. Just wow. throw it out there. You never just know. Give us, just give us a thumbs <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. up. You don't even have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we appreciate your work. <laughs> all right. We're going to leave it at that. <laughs> I'm going to run to our uh, first show. All right. Let's talk about Higurashi this week. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, actually, I should, I should have mentioned this too. I, I, yeah. So not not the final, not the finale. We have another season of Higurashi coming, Sotsu. Oh god. Oh, yeah, god. Let me cry, Sotsu. Uh, which, David, what does that mean, David? What is Sotsu? When they cry again? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I know you're joking, but it just it really depends on the kanji. So, <laughs> so oh, I'm, I, I'm joking. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. I, cause I don't know what, what go means either. But like, yeah, it's just. Five. It's whatever, so this I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's not wrong, but uh uh but yeah, so finally the the season finale of Higarashi, unfortunately it only lasted twenty four episodes. We never went back to that scene where Satoko pulls out a gun out of nowhere on Rika and the others. And uh it looks like this arc happened way before episode one, or I guess it's what started episode one's universe. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm not really sure. Yeah, that's what I got uh, too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so Toko, fucking hate that bitch. Uh, <laughs> you know she can die in a fire, and uh, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> um, I mean, I, 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 what what are your guys' thoughts on this uh, this so, week's episode? So, so cool. I mean, so, not 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 altogether different than yours. <laughs> yeah, so cool here. <laughs> like he, like you tell me how like. I was like a trigger this week's episode because you watch it before I did, and then I watched it. And like for people who don't know me, like I really hate it when um when characters like uh don't like don't realize like their actions have consequences or just really selfish or like lack empathy. 
and all that basically happened to Toko this week, so I was hella triggered. And I mm. like, mm. man, like I didn't like. I remember like, when the season started, I didn't care much about her. And then when she like went through her arc, I just didn't think about much about her still. I just I didn't like her as much. But now it's like after all this, it's like it really gets to me. Like I fucking hate her now. Like I'm just I'm with Koo, man. I like I'm so triggered yes. by like like all yes. like this like. You gotta make Rika go through all of this just because you don't want her to leave. Are you fucking serious? Kind of crazy. I, like, I mean, it's it's like it's like to a level where like I have trouble believing that even like a sociopath would go through all of this. Like, like an honest to god sociopath. Like, just all of this work, all of this effort for what? You're like, bec- so you can go to school together for a couple of years. Like, it's just, it's just crazy. She can't, and it, she can't it's leave. It, for me. It, it's, it's 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 Hotel California, but he's he's in Nazama. <laughs> you can't check out. Oh, yeah, Lord. pretty much. I just I don't know. I just kind of feel like if this is the point, if the point of this season was Satoko and Rika, which it seems like it was, I feel like the entire first half could have just been cut. I almost kind of mm. feel like the whole first half was there just to fuck with people who had already seen it. And we're like trying to look for like what's different and like all this other stuff, but ultimately it 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 contributed nothing to like what what the ending is all about. So it was just really kind of a waste of everybody's time. And then if we're talking about like their friendship and how like effed in the head Satoko is, like I just feel like I just don't find it very compelling. Um, mm-hmm. I don't really feel like it fits in with the universe of Higurashi. Um, and I don't really know like like all of this stuff with um with like the mountain dogs and the bloodhounds that they were talking about like mm. there was no ease into that you know what i mean like from the rest of the season there was really absolutely nothing there to really help like newer viewers so i thought that w- and they just like really got into it so i i just feel like that was like a little bit offensive when they had originally labeled the show as like appropriate for beginners or like okay for beginners so i have i have a lot of issues with this season um I don't know if I'll honestly I actually don't know if I'll return for for any more. I don't care about Satoko <laughs> at all. I kind of want to know though like I kind of want to know what happens so I kind of feel like maybe I'll just like slip on in like at the end. For me it's you like know? let's be real. We're going to watch it when it it's comes bad. out. It's let's the, it's, be it's real. It's the sunk cost fallacy. Like we're we're all we're all so, so bad at it. Like we cannot like just give up something that we've invested so much time to. So True, true. Yeah. Uh, but it, yeah, I guess from a, a newbie standard, right? Haven't ever seen an episode of the previous seasons. I feel like the first 12 episodes was just to draw in the people to get them into the universe of Higarashi or get them accustomed to what's going to happen. Yeah. And then from there on out, they're just setting up for season two. Like with them stating at the very end, you know, like next time on Higarashi when they cry Sotsu. So, okay, at least they have a season two. So it's not like they ended it uh at a really bad point right uh so we will get closure hopefully um again i'm not really sure how higarashi does these sort of things with a new season how they connect them together uh even story-wise i'm not really sure uh what the main point of the show is uh so yeah i'm still gonna watch the next season and see how it connects because i really want to know what happens uh but yeah totally felt like the first 12 episodes was just was just like useless like you you really didn't need it yeah right? like but but the, the, at the same time it's like that's the one that i enjoyed the most like i feel like yeah. i was like that was like mm-hmm. the core of like kikarashi so like, all like this stuff going on with like satoko like the setup here it's just like i don't know mm-hmm. like it's, it's not like it's not what i like about kikarashi so mm-hmm. so like mm-hmm. i just like this is what they want to go with it's like then i guess i don't know i wouldn't like the ending then so and also just like oh. The way like they uh, they the way that they like, they did the first where they had the twelve episodes it just felt like it didn't really contribute much it felt very like visual novel style I guess where like a lot of times like visual novels like do they they drag on to like a lot of, like long periods just to until you get to the good stuff or to like the actual like answers so I guess that's like the style they're trying to go for here but like it just didn't uh, pay off in the end like even then with what Taylor's mentioning like the the last couple episodes you went from you know like like beginner friendly to if you don't know what you're doing or if you don't know anything about the past 
two or three seasons, you know, get the fuck out because we're dropping bombs here. You know, we got we got the bloodhounds, we got the mountain dogs, we got this new chick that came out of nowhere that's strong and on you. Right. And then you're just like, who are all these people? And what does what does this even mean? Right. And you don't get any answers because it's basically we're gonna introduce uh or no, we're gonna set up uh the storyline for next season. And you have to wait another three to six months before you can see what happens, like how it concludes. So, And don't forget anything that you kind of picked up during this season. Make sure you keep it all in your head until then. Yeah, right? <laughs> but like, uh, you're like you're safe. Uh, like it didn't uh, matter like the, for the first half. So, Right. Yeah, it, 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 half. yeah, it really didn't matter. So that so, was kind of disappointing. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It, it was going so well. And then they just did this. Uh, as... As a third season to the series, I I find that really disappointing. So, mm-hmm. um, but hey, maybe uh, maybe season four, you know, so too, maybe that'll draw us back in somehow. Maybe. I mean, honestly, I know I've said it before. I'm sorry, but like, especially for you, David, if you really liked the first twelve episodes, you really should just go back and watch the original yeah. because oh, it's going it, to give you all of that feeling. It's in my long list of backlogs, but no, I really I I, I enjoyed the first twelve episodes. Like that. Mm. so so i, I definitely will just, just curious how did uh season one or season two end uh what do you like the plot or yeah plot wise because i'm trying to figure out um uh, how the originals connected to go in a sense right like would you have been able to connect them at all if you were to watch season one, two, and then three? Or is it just kind of season three? They started out with just a random universe in a sense to kind of just get you accustomed to Hikarashi. So the second season answered all of the questions from the second season of the original answered all the questions from the first season. So like it explained like um you didn't find out that Rika was a like a looper until season two. And okay. you explain like how she's a looper, why she's a looper. You learn who Hanyu is. You learn um, a little bit more about like the history of Hinamizawa. You learn exactly and very specifically what Hinamizawa syndrome is. Mm-hmm. Um, you learn about ta- um, I don't know what ta- Takano and ta- uh, Takano, yeah, Takano and ta- Takashi is that his name? Anyways, Tomi, Tomi Take. Tomi Take. Yeah. Uh, you learn like exactly what their history is too, and you probably picked up on a lot of that from ta- Takano in this episode, but. Yep. Um, it just explains it all really clearly. And it comes to like a basically peaceful ish resolution. And then we come like, and then there's like all this other stuff that came in between like other visual novel things. And okay. I don't know at all what happened there, but those definitely have, you definitely need to read them to like fully grasp everything that's happening in this season. Wait, so they, did Uh-oh. they ever show Rika leaving the village and going to that, 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 that high school? Not that, I, not that I remember. That was totally okay. new for me. So I don't know if yeah. I like missed something or what, but. So I'm assuming season two ended with the happy ending, right? Mm-hmm. With... I think it's like okay. the one we saw in this this season with like in this where, show, right? Where like with Hanyu yeah. and and like uh, was it was it Takano and Tomi Take just hugging each other while like she was crying, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so that's the, the canon ending. I'm assuming. The show actually had a good ending. Apparently. <laughs> okay. I mean, well, there's not, always not, room. Until, there's always until, room for tragedy. I guess until, I should tell until something goes outside right, you, bitch, right. and just fuck it all up for Rika again. You know. I, I, I despise that girl so much that I am going to watch Sotsu just to see if she gets what's coming to her. That's all I want. The whole next season, I want to watch every episode of like, oh, I hope that bitch gets what's coming to her. I hope it's happening. Dude, because I... uh, cause I'm assuming it's it's alluding to the, it's going to end with, with uh, Rika remembering about that that shard that can kill loopers. And then she kills Satoko of that. Like, that's the only way I can see this ever ending. Otherwise, Satoko and Rika, they're going to constantly live through this loop until uh, Satoko is happy or whatever. I just remember that, yeah, that one episode where, like, where, like, Rika, like, had her guts opened by Satoko. And, like, yeah, like, like she's going to be, like, I hope, I hope this becomes a point where she realized, like, that Satoko was looping through all of it. And, like, I hope mm. Rika just, like, flips out on her for that. <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, I think that's all I had. Um, <laughs> yeah, hopefully it so gets this better. Was, this was the season ending or season yeah. finale. Finale, yes. I mean, oh, yeah. wow. I didn't that... actually know that it was the, that this was the last episode. So I'm yeah. glad was, that was news for me. <laughs> yeah. And is oh, the what? next season just greenlit, or is there a, a yeah. date already? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's green. greenlit. 
uh, I assume it's summer. summer? I think. I thought it was I summer. Th- yeah. I think they said it was summer. Yeah. Basically, like the end of Got this episode, it. they said like, "We'll see you next time in Higurashi when they cry." So it's suit. Okay. Again. So, yeah. So. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh man. But yeah, that's mixed, all I had to say. Feelings. Yeah. Yeah. I think I have to go watch the original. <laughs> so. Jesus. Yeah. So that's that'll be it for um for Higurashi. Move on to our next show. So let's talk about Hori Mia. Yeah, David. Let's talk about Hori Mia. <laughs> Who did we have come back? <laughs> Ah, uh, your fave, which David. A, which is a joke, man. Who was that the come back? I didn't want to see her come back. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did not even know that Shu existed. Like, I had no idea. Yeah, uh, he, he, oh, yeah. Like, he's, he's, he's been, he's been sprinkled he's, here and there of yeah, he's his, like his boisterous antics. of. Right. I but in terms of him yeah. adding any substance, no, he has not added any substance until this episode when he finally got his background. Man, mm-hmm. he showed up on screen. And I was like, "Who the heck is this guy?" Like, I don't know. I guess we get another new character background, like right near mm-hmm. near near the end here. Yeah, not just him, but his sister too, apparently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And do they or and their obsession with does the other one hate them? Despite the fact that there's no evidence that I can see for them thinking that the other one hates each other. I was not a fan of this episode. This is easily my least favorite one of the season. <laughs> yeah, um, it's. Yeah. it's Okay, I'll be that one out. Then I'll say I, I really enjoy this episode. So you I, better. I, it was basically I, all for you. All right, what? just saying. No, it's not because of someone, someone or anything. Just I like the sibling mm-hmm. dynamic. So I thought it was nice, and I know we didn't see much of like of the green haired guy for like this season, but I thought it was a nice spotlight, and and that, yeah, I, I mean, I I thought it was a nice like also like. I guess contrast between like how he shows himself in school versus his family life and how like I don't know. I don't know if it's like that's like his I guess I guess I mean not his real self, but he's like he he feels comfortable at school being that way, but then he's also he knows how to be serious at home, how to take care of his little sister. So that's what I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, that makes I, sense. I think that's fair in that, you know, it's kind of relatable to, you know. Mm-hmm. People even in real life when they're, you know, attending school and stuff, you have like kind of this persona at school and then you have your at home persona, which is always kind of like two two sides of a different coin in those mm-hmm. instances. Um, I think for me, while I while I didn't, you know, fully enjoy like the major focus of the latter half of the episode, I, I did really enjoy the beginning with um, Yanagi when they're in the room together and they're talking oh, about that. like how they want him to start using first names and now he's like part of the crew and then like everybody's you know really down and into it except for mia because mia's afraid that yanagi's gonna like take away all his new friends so mm-hmm. he's like still being like really standoffish and stuff um and then i really uh thought the scene was cute when they were talking about how yanagi um i think it was hori that mentioned like how he always talks very proper except when he's around yuki because obviously you know he has that crush there mm-hmm. um but i really enjoyed the scene where um Remy is kind of playing with Yanagi where he wants uh, him to say bye bye and like, you know, a cute voice. And he keeps on saying it like very formal. And then when Yuki comes up, he finally is like, oh, bye bye. I thought that was cute. So Which... I enjoyed that. And then, yeah, the latter half, like, I don't know. It's good to see the development of all these characters. But I think like Ku and like Taylor have said, like, you know, a lot of people are probably admittedly here for Hori and Mia. And mm. with such a short season and now you've just spent like the last man, what, like four episodes just completely on side character backstories and developments? It does kind of take away from, like, building that, like, main plot point forward. The way that the show is, and with the manga, like, they have the time to afford that. So it Mm -hmm. is interesting to see, like, why aren't you adapting the chapters that are, like, progressing, you know, that main relationship in a way versus, you know, with the manga, you have more time to, like, take it more slow and build, like, all these character stories. It just feels very disjointed at the end of the day. And that has to be because of how many episodes they have. Yeah. I was telling Stratner earlier. I was like, it kind of reminds the way that if it, it feels like the way that they're kind of trying to convey the story reminds me a little bit of like the way that Kaguya-sama or Gekkan Shoujo go, which is it's like short half episodes. And they're kind of just like, you could, you could just plop yourself into any scene and it doesn't, you're not really like with some exceptions, you're not missing too much. They're kind of like standalone episodes. You know what I mean? You don't have to like really have a lot of like, um, like lead up or explanation for what's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, but with Hori Mia, I feel like um, it's a little bit deeper than those shows. Um, at least most of the time, like it's really kind of also about human drama. And like an example of where I feel like 
the direction that they're doing this kind of falls short is like when they were saying that Mia is like, I can't remember who said it to them, but when somebody said that Mia and that new guy, you know, the redhead guy we were all talking about, the one who talks formally, when they said, yeah. oh, you know, you and Mia are really good friends now. And I was like, didn't he just show up like two episodes ago? <laughs> like, it just, yep. to me, it feels awkward and it could just be me. And I, it's really not like a strong hit against the anime. I still enjoy the anime despite all of that. I just think it probably went like read a lot smoother in the manga. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just cool. like, again, we really don't know like what the time frame is between these episodes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, we've had obviously the discussions of where it's like, oh, okay, it was spring break at this moment. Mm -hmm. And then now, you know, they're talking about snow right around the corner. So mm -hmm. I think the one thing that they could do better is to give more kind of basis into like, okay, what part of the school year are we in? Mm -hmm. So we no. know like when we're making those jumps are. What do you think? Yeah, it seems like I, you have I, a... I don't think it's more of a time jump. I think it's just they're trying to focus on a key point that guys just become friends a lot easier than girls, I guess. Hmm. So, I can see that. So yeah, maybe it's just the that. fact that for some reason, guys can just become like like the best of friends in a short period of time. Like you just need something small to work it out. Like how I believe it was the, uh, the president said Goku. It was like, yeah, or maybe it was Tori. It was like, yeah, whenever we need to solve something, guys just do it by rock, paper, scissors, and then we can, you know, like come to an agreement or whatever that way. And I think it was a episode, or two, like either the last episode or episode or two episodes ago, where they were just talking about how for some reason guys are so like girls think that guys are weird because they can just forget it, like forgive each other so fast or become friends so fast that the, that the girls found it really weird. So I think maybe just, they were just trying to drive that key point home, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, think I, th I think even in ties to him to be like one of the very first episodes when we get introduced to Sengoku of how he was kind of this character that the main crew felt like they potentially wouldn't vibe with. But then we see, you know, Toru and Mia sit down with him and they share ice cream. And that's mm -hmm. the way that they become, you know, friends with him. That's... So it's totally to your point, Koo, where, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's and, that. And, 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 I, I just felt like the show, though, like the way, with the way like they, the way they directed these things, like it felt more off to me, like. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I totally agree with what Darren is saying in chat as well. Like, there's no real conflict between these characters. So that mm -hmm. makes it a lot easier as well. Where, you know, yeah. other shows, like, there there always is kind of that conflict that is a taking, you know, additional episode mm -hmm. of, like, you know, talking to, like, different parts of the friend groups and then them coming to the realization. Like, I guess the only real conflict we had was when um, Toru and Mia got into a fight and then they both were like admitting like oh you know i was the one at fault or whatever if you even want to call that like a conflict but yeah a lot of things admittedly do just kind of get quickly pushed under the rug of just like okay well we got you know more stuff to move on to now we're not going to focus on this which is good with how few episodes we have but yeah i don't know i think i just enjoy watching them so much that i don't really like being told like what happened during the, these like times that it feels like we missed i would like to be able to watch it and not just skip yeah. ahead to those things. i mean i just love it how they just dropped like the last time we really focused on hori and mia it was when you know they had sex with each other and then it's like <laughs> okay we're just gonna completely go a different direction now cool like that happened <laughs> oh that's that what you thing. remember yeah yeah hey man i mean that's the last thing i got that was a it's a very <laughs> heated scene Mm -hmm. You know, I actually thought I would be more upset about like the lack of focus on Hori and Mia, but I actually really don't mind it very much at all. I mean, I'm not really super into romance genre anyway, so I feel like, okay, they're good. They're happy. That's settled. Let's move on to yeah. everybody else's love's lives. And I think admittedly I, I did get less involved with Hori and Mia as well when they kept on driving into like Hori's kinks. It's just like, okay, cool. Like, I get it. You know, you like to be pushed around and beat up a little bit and you like mm -hmm. horror movies. Like, okay, mm -hmm. can we can we move on a little bit deeper to like your mm -hmm. substance as a character, which I think in the beginning they did a good part of like showing that Hori kind of puts on this facade all the time mm -hmm. and isn't true to her emotions. And I wish they would dive more into that. And maybe that is the way of tying into like her being like, oh yeah, you know, I like being a masochist. But it's kind of like, I, I would have wished for more. Like I, I want to believe that Hori has more depth. More to her. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I feel, I feel what you're saying. I think the same thing a lot too. Like when are we going to, like, I feel like every other character has all of this development except for Hori. We just learn these like super hyper specific things about her and then nothing else. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's the same way with Mia. Like, you know, we have those like moments where it's like, we're really meant to feel for Mia. Like when he has the flashback of him as a kid, you know, not having any friends or anything in him kind of as his older version saying like, don't worry, like in time, this is all going to pass. Like there's brighter days ahead. And then they just completely pull away from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh. but That's again, they they do a good job at really giving all the characters time to shine. It's just you know, mm -hmm. 
there's not enough time with the the limited episodes that we have i guess yeah Yeah, so really our main point is just that we want more we just want it to be fully fleshed out (laughs) right yeah like Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it feels a long running anime i think Mm -hmm. this format will be fine but Mm -hmm. just the fact that we're so like we're gated due to the time restraint i would want them to focus more on like you know like you said like developing hori's character and mia's character Mm -hmm. you know not just the extreme parts so um Mm -hmm. it it to me it is a little disappointing just because I feel like the the payout isn't as great as if they were to just focus on two, maybe even four characters at, at most. But when you're trying to give the spotlight to every single character and then make them feel important as well, uh, instead of having a uh, like a bond to one or two characters, when you try to be friends with everyone, you kind of lose that 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 special connection that you would have had. So yeah, uh, so that to me that kind of sucks. Yeah, I think if anything, my final point is kind of with the thing that I guess this show does well is that if you aren't really invested in the Hori and Mia, you have a lot of options in these <laughs> other side characters. So kind of right. looking at it the other way, I guess, you know, where you, you don't get totally written off of like, if it was just Hori and Mia and like you absolutely don't like it, then it's like, oh man, this sucks. Like, okay, another show I'm just going to drop because there's nothing yeah. else for me there. But it's like with this, there's a lot of things that you can kind of pull to, I guess, if mm-hmm. you're not really feeling the, the main vibe. So, yeah. yeah, unless you pull some Game of Thrones shit and just start killing <laughs> off random characters. Oh, man, that'd <laughs> well, be that great. The finale just like <laughs> just starts going in. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, man. I mean, I think that would definitely throw some people off and you might lose some fans. You might gain some fans or two. All right. Hey, I mean, Game of Thrones did it. Why can't just give us a shock you know? factor? Right. You <laughs> know? They know that realistically, everybody's just going to go read the source material after anyways. It's like, why not? True. If you're not going to bring back any further animation. <laughs> Jump the shark a little bit. Let's have some fun. I mean, what, what's the worst that can go right? Like, can go wrong. So it's whatever. No, no, I don't think we're at that point yet. Uh, maybe, maybe. But oh, also, uh, I wanted to ask what what did you guys think of the the significance of the constant, uh, like, uh, like the the scenes where they would cut off to a different segment with like snow falling, oh, snow transition. Yeah, I think, sh- like, it's, I think it's just is that the... supposed to signify something. I thought I was supposed it... to tie to Yuki at first, but then I was like, oh, they didn't tie in Yuki at all. The only, thing, really I can... the only thing I can think of is like, it's just usually it's like the school year ending for Japanese schools because then like, because they're third year, so they're going to have to graduate soon too. And so, because mm. uh, cause they yeah, ends in March for them. So maybe it's like, like maybe it's, that, maybe it's them trying to say like the passage of the winter time. Because again, like we don't know the sense of time in this show. So it was like <laughs> the only way yeah. of telling us. I think well, school ends for for them in March. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah uh, it, it goes from April to March for them. Well, actually, with with last week, uh, what was it last week where where Toru and Yuki was having a talk on the rooftop? I I would assume that based on what they were saying, it's getting close to like springtime because you know snow is melting. Can't wait yeah. for spring to come around. And if if that's the case, I don't see why they would sh- like. Uh, well, like, I don't know. Do I don't the know. transitions with 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 snow know, said, like, because snow. spring is coming, right? I don't think he said. I don't know. If he said the spring is literally coming. I think they meant like when it does melt. I think. I don't think he meant like it's coming soon. I don't know. I will have to look at it again. Yeah, the only reason I, I guess I thought it was Yuki is because the episode started with like Yanagi, and just also like Toru, kind of mm. having that interaction. So I thought, oh, okay, are they going to try to drive it this way? And then they didn't. So right. Yeah. Mm. Okay, maybe I'm just nitpicking too much then, because I thought it would have a bigger significance than that, to be honest. Uh, no. I mean, they definitely showed it more than enough times, but yeah. <laughs> right, like five or six times, so... yeah, yeah. I, I have nothing to contribute to this. I just found it distracting, and I didn't think about it at all. <laughs> yeah, so it's distracting, right? So there's got to so be a reason thing, yeah. why they're doing it. You <laughs> yeah, know? it's like, if you're going to distract me, give it some, some rationale. And <laughs> right. to your point, if there is no rationale, then it is just like, why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, like, what was Anyways, the yeah. I think that that uh, sums pretty much everything up. Yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, yeah. we'll just end it there. So that's it for Hori Mia, and then move on to our next show. We got B Stars. God, I can't Oof. believe we only have one more episode left. Oh, I don't know if I'm excited or sad because I can finally go and blast through the manga, but I don't want to have the anime be over. It's too good. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Runner. First of all, we gotta say R.I.P. to the. The alpaca. I'm, I'm just kidding here. Uh, the doll shape. I right? 
because because <laughs> Pina is now dead. Holy shit! Like Do we, just, we don't know that. We don't know that. We don't know that coup. Girl, did you not see the blood stains on his shirt? I don't care. He could have like, <laughs> just had a fight. He could have just like covered himself in the blood, like what they do in like the I don't I, like in The Walking Dead, right? Because he just wants to like smell like the like the thing to like fool Lagoshi, right? We don't know for sure that we killed him. He's he he's, he's got. He spilled something. He was eating that hot dog in the corner of the cut. No, 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 no. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's 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 be real, okay? Like last week's episode, um, Pina kind of made this 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 big claim to to Riz saying, you know, I don't fear death. Come at me if you will. You know, I'll gladly go. You know, like whatever. You know, like I have no regrets if I were to die today. And you know, here he comes strutting along, thinking he's a big shot or he's like sneaky because he has a camera there, trying to like bait Riz into doing something and then like Riz, like it's, it's just right there so Riz seizes it he 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 grabs the camera breaks it and then like the last footage of, of Pina is him like having this fearful face right and you know like cuts out goes to the next scene and then we finally see Riz again but you know we have like the blood on his his, his hands his mouth his shirt I mean come on he's he's dead you know? we didn't we didn't see it happen on screen i so therefore i am holding on to hope because I, I, mean, I i love pina so much i in, i will actually cry if he's really dead in an animated role to follow though if, if you if it doesn't get captured on like actually like on scene you can always it's it, their death is questionable yes thank you they're just there at mia Threat was we, there. He even saw this episode for I, once. I, like I didn't even... see the TV. <laughs> <laughs> but we I, didn't. I was, uh... We didn't see Tim die, and we know that it's confirmed now that he's dead, right? Well, like... I mean, okay, that's completely different though, because Tim was not a major character that they've built up over episodes. Like the show opened up with him already being devoured. So like that uh -huh. was like the vehicle, like the plot point vehicle right there. It's yeah, a completely sure. different situation. But, but they, they build characters up just to only you know take them out. And, you know, like like what we were talking about, Game of Thrones. They can threaten, but as you just as a, it's the brilliant point you just made. If you don't see it on screen, then the death is questionable. Mm -hmm. So we'll oh, just... going back to that. Okay, I don't know, but let's just <laughs> say if he is dead, RP. If not, you know, man, yeah, I don't, I don't see how he's gonna get out of that, but. I don't know. What about the scene with Lagoshi uh, cross dressing? <laughs> oh my god! So <laughs> when I saw him walk across, I was just thinking to myself. I had a pod video, and I was like, "They did not do my man like this." All right, you do not show. <laughs> like, I was like, I, I like, I hundred percent knew it was Lagoshi, but I was like, "Please yep. God, don't put him like, don't set him up like this." And then dude comes out, and like. He, he he looks all jacked up. Let's be real. Like, I don't know who did this makeup. That dress doesn't even fit the guy. I don't know what it's showing. Like, if you if you see the, the screenshot of his back, like, you could see, like, mm. the, the scratch marks and whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of female would come out like that to a high-end bar in the black market? As you know, said, a large woman. You just said <laughs> a large woman. <laughs> but in the black market, you know, uh, she's seen some stuff. Yeah. Cool. She's been in some wars, some battles. Well, it fits perfectly, Lu just like the red the red dress, man. Lewis's expressions when he was talking to him, too, and, like, his reactions were so funny. I was just losing my mind. I mean, honestly, it was just pure comedy. <laughs> yeah. That was like, the only part I saw. Like, Lewis's facial expression and his thought process, that was me. I was like, yo, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, what is he? <laughs> There's no way, right? Like, oh my god, I'm gonna kill him. Like, what is he doing? You know? And then do it like a boogie just in the background. I was like, yo, man, I know that he's a growing boy, but yo, you gotta you gotta learn how to pick your woman. <laughs> you know, like you got better taste than that, son. And then like I bet you when Lagosi left, and then Louis was like, Yeah, you know, I, I turned her down. I bet you he was like jumping for joy inside when he saw that his his boy didn't go for that, you know. Well, he even was like, I think that was a wise decision. Yeah, that her. was a wise decision, you know. <laughs> But oh, oh my god, god. that was Damn, great! I laughed scene. so hard. <laughs> I couldn't oh. believe what I saw. Oh god. Let's see. There was also the um the ending of I don't, I, I kind of like to talk about that um with Lewis and Ipuki in the car driving sure. away. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you like what do you think happened with that gunshot? I feel like he he shot himself. Uh, Ibuki probably shot himself. Um, don't you? The only way I, can justify, I mean, the only way I can justify that is that uh, for for Lewis to be able to get out of the the gang, right? Mm -hmm. There has to be like he's not going to get out alive. I'm assuming once you come in, you can't leave unless right. you die or you, you do something important, right? 
and then uh with the with the uh the end scene of like lewis and ibuki driving in a car right and mm-hmm. there's that depressed look that lewis has at the very end mm-hmm. like it, it it to me which it, it would be like foreshadowing that you know uh, something sad is going to happen, which is in this case, Ibuki, who's kind of like a father figure to Lewis. Mm-hmm. He killed himself so that Lewis could get out of the game or whatever. How does that so, help him get out though? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I just don't know quite. Know, I just don't quite know like what to take away from that. I'm curious to see. I mean, I, I guess that's what we'll find out resolved in the next episode, but right. Because you did hear a gunshot. So unless mm-hmm. he just shot in the air to try to scare Lewis, I guess I don't see what the, like, it, I'm assuming it, it meant something significant, so yeah. they wouldn't just end the episode of a gunshot in a tunnel driving away. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, not sure. And the next episode is going to be the fateful fight with Riz. Man, yeah, I think it's the last like, episode yeah. too, right? Last episode of the season. Yeah. So that's going to be it. It's uh, there's going to be a lot that they need to like uh, like unfold in a sense here. So? Yep, because we have to figure out what happened with Lewis and Ibuki. Uh, we mm-hmm. have to figure out how the fight goes. Um, mm-hmm. And in a sense, I think you still need to have a conclusion to Haru and Lagosi's relationship, mm-hmm. right? And if Lewis was able to make it to that uh, to that location where uh, Lagosi and Riz is fighting, mm-hmm. uh, I'm assuming there's going to be like a meaningful conversation there as well, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, Lewis, you're here. You know, now we can finally go back to school together. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be like how it was back in the old days. And, you know, maybe Juno comes back in the picture or whatever. Uh, like, they announced the next B-Star. Because the dumb thing is, is they they brought up the, the, the security snake, right? And they brought up, like, who's going to be the next B-Star or how important it is for these, uh, uh, for society that there is a B-Star that is named. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, they never touched on that ever since they brought it up in episode two or three. Mm-hmm. So, uh, there, there's a lot that they have to... Uh, Let's wrap up in a sense, um, story wise. So, yeah, um, sure I can't really, I can't see them doing too much with Haru in the next episode. I kind of feel like that's like a next season kind of thing. Personally, I don't really know how much they'll go into that because, like you said, there's just a lot to cover, and I feel right. like her, her relationship with with like, oh, she hasn't really been like the center focus of this season, so they mm-hmm. might not really like worry about that too much. It might like maybe like a quick scene, like what we've been seeing. Um, as for like who the B star is, I really feel like that's going to be like the main focal point. If there is a next season, I think it'll be the focal point of the next season. Um, so I guess, yeah, I mean, mostly just seeing how this fight turns out. Yeah. So if they announce a season three, you know, that'll be great Mm because like I said, really loving this series and I want more of it. Yes. Uh, but it depends on if we get another season or not, Mm -hmm. just because I don't know how popular this is. Like and I don't know how popular this is in Japan. And here, I like the everybody that I've talked to that's seen it has liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just haven't really heard that many people talk about it, and I haven't like dug into the like dug into the numbers to see. But I right. really hope that there is another season because it's my it's one of my favorites. So yeah, it's, it's it's really good. I mean, and I feel like they. I was gonna say that the manga for V Star has won a lot of awards in Japan. So. Yeah. So I mean, but. That doesn't mean I'll get another anime season, mm-hmm. right? So, right. Yeah. like, I'm glad it's got two seasons uh, so far. The mm-hmm. manga ended, and since oh, okay, I don't know how I don't know how much influence Netflix has, but I could see them just wanting to finish out the series. So, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, that's actually a good mm-hmm. point. I forget that it's Netflix. Yeah, yep. and that's also why you can't tell popularity here because it's a lot of shows stuck in Netflix jail. So. Yeah. <laughs> it could still do well though. I mean, uh, Demon Slayer killed it on Netflix. But it was, Demon Slayer it, just killed it everywhere. That's just that's the but one, that's Demon Slayer, <laughs> and also it, it aired before coming on Netflix too. So that's it's not oh, yeah. like, it's not Netflix like exclusive like B stars is. Mm-hmm. Oh okay, that's why I'm yeah. I'm saying yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then th- there's so much more growth for for all the main characters. I mean, all right. So for me, the main characters again is Haru, Lagosi, and, and Lewis, right? Mm-hmm. And then I feel like there's still so much growth left for these three, especially since they're still in school. Mm-hmm. Um, I really want to see how Lagosi grows, just because of the beginning of this episode. This guy eats a bug, 
and then the man is so distraught. Oh my god, I forgot over, about that. <laughs> yeah, overeating a like a like a, it's oh, a bug, right? But he yeah. took someone's life, and he's like, "Oh no, now you can't become a moth." And like, I killed you before you're in your prime. And then like he had this epiphany where the moth comes to him, say, "Hey, you know, don't apologize to us. We're just insects. We don't have desire, or motivation like you, bigger animals or whatever." I was like, "Man, like, how do you even?" fucking like deep, have bro. this yeah how do you even have this hallucination <laughs> from eating like a like a handful of bugs that shit just blew my mind and apparently this made lagosi stronger by strengthening his resolve i yeah i i don't know but well i think because like a big part of his weakness is that he's always like feeling self-conscious or like kind of hating on himself for being a carnivore and like he really beats himself down a lot so i do think that actually having that um like justification given to him from this bug probably mm-hmm. like probably really could help like she, this this poor soft boy <laughs> I, I, I guessed i mean uh, i i don't know like maybe if this was like the stepping stone for him to be able to just eat meat without feeling so guilty right mm-hmm. like first a bug and then a smaller rodent like a rat or something and then you know moving on to like cows or whatever so yeah, I, I don't know. It, like to me, it was really weird, and like I find it weird how this empowered him to become even stronger, strong enough to take on Riz. But you know, I guess we'll see what happens next episode. So, yeah, yeah. I do have one more thing to add, quick though, too, which is because we were talking about Lagoshi's development. In addition to his, there was also Lewis this episode coming to terms with realizing that he actually likes carnivores too. I thought that was kind of a big deal for him to admit out loud. I think it kind of felt like a dirty thing for him to really say before. Mm-hmm. Um, I, well, I don't even, I think he completely just like blocked it out of his head that it was even an option. Um, so I thought that was a pretty big deal for him too. This time with the Shishigumi, like really has like impacted him and helped him grow. Like he kind of mm-hmm. went into it, I think, not knowing what the heck his plan was going to be. And he's figuring it out. We're seeing the growth of that. So looking forward to more of that. I really hope we get more growth for Haru, Haru because like she's basically just hardly been in it this season. Yeah, yeah, sadly. Uh, as much as I hate the girl, like I would want her to develop her character as well, right? But that's well, just me. Developed, you probably wouldn't hate her as much. Right, right. But <laughs> I don't know. I'm just biased. Whenever I look at Lagosi, I just see innocent me. Just, Aww. just poor guy. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hopefully season three comes out and we'll get all our answers. And you know, I feel like if it wasn't for Lagosi, I think Louis would have been fine in, as the leader, you know? But I feel like Lagosi is slowly bringing out like uh, the the side that Lewis tried to like shut out completely. Mm-hmm. So I agree. Yeah, sadly. <laughs> ah, yeah, but yeah. Can't wait to see what happens next week. So same. That's it. All right. So we got. We'll leave it there for our B stars. Um, Trent, I don't know if you want to just quickly go through um, slime show real quick. Don't want to spend the slime show days. might actually be a little bit longer this oh, time. Slime show is okay. actually really good. Yeah, it's picking yeah. up. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I think. Did what? You did you even watch it? I mean, oh my god, watched you it, watched it. But... Are you still like it? Uh-oh. I mean, not that I didn't <laughs> like it. Just like, Here comes I the haters. Much, I didn't think there was nah. much to talk about. So. Um. Yeah. I mean, I guess. The, yeah. Probably. Like, in the, like, it was the just, long there was like two fights. So. Yeah. Bro, but the payoff, the revenge. Yeah, yeah. I like how again, like, the, okay, the one kind of gripe that I've had about this show is how, in like, the previous fight when they all fought in the bar- the 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 um the barrier, and they keep just saying about how like they overestimate how strong they were, blah blah blah, and then the other mm-hmm. side was saying how weak they were. I'm thinking like motherfucker, like they don't even mention the barrier in this fight, and then the the whole thing is just like the when they like the whole back and forth, like kind of like the dialogue that they mm-hmm. that they speak about how. They talk about how 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 I remember like they don't even mention it about how like they were nerfed because of the barrier at all in any parts of the fight. Yep. And they were just they, they you know it was just like expected like you know when it ended up happening to an extent. It, uh, it's, well, like especially with the guy with the sword, dude, that guy was so fucking annoying. I, I could I could not stand this guy. So I, <laughs> it felt so good. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. god, it was, the payoff was so sweet, like, man. I don't I don't know. Like, dude. Well, I mean, him and Gobta. Like, like I love Gobta. Like, that guy's just right. badass. <laughs> like, um, but no, it, it, like that. The, the payoff definitely felt well. Like, like really nice. Even though, again, like they just gave him too much screen time to just talk. I'm like, why are you letting these assholes talk? Like, they're, right. they're pointless. Like, they're just they're just weak. And the guy just dies off immediately. I'm thinking, wow, we wasted so much time listening to this guy. 
and then um God, and then at first, like, uh, also to do that, the, that punching guy, too. Like, when when he was first starting to run away, I was like, no, you, you can't bring this guy back again. Like, it needs to be done now. <laughs> and then, and then, um, dude, the, the, and then the Oracle Lord, dude, the Oracle Lord's a beast. <laughs> I totally forgot the Oracle Lord ass. was part of the crew. I thought, I thought they killed him yeah. off last no, time. No, um, they that. killed the original. Yeah, yeah they, they, killed they killed the original, original Orc Lord. But yeah. the Orc Lord itself, like, the, like, he gave it, I think he gave it to him to become the new Orc Lord. Uh, Rina, yeah. Yep. Um, okay. so, but I didn't actually realize like how fast this guy was. Like, I also like the the talk of like you know back and forth with the punching guy. It's like, wait, why the hell are you using a shield? It's like, it's like you know, like make this a fair fight. And the orc lords, what the, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, like this is war. This, this is, is war, war, boy. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and then you find out. And then you find out he didn't even need that at all. And then this guy basically just it just beats him down. And then uh, um, uh, it was also a little bit messed up when he basically just choked out that chick and then he got a power because of it. <laughs> to be to be fair, all three of them were annoying as fuck, so that oh, was they're all awful. Which and is like I can't think but, of a better way for her to die, to be honest. But, but what but how did she get the regen ability? Or it's or I mean sorry, how did he get the regen ability from her? She didn't uh, have one of that, did she? I know supposedly I, by by I, killing killing like, a, like uh like an ally like, or whatever. Like, like a prerequisite, like uh like a yeah. Like in order to fulfill the requirement to unlock this guy, okay. to sacrifice her soul. So it's not that she had it; she just had to sacrifice like her soul. So it's basically like a list of things. That's like, oh, do this, and you get yep. the regen ability. Yeah, yep. and exactly. then that backfired too, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Like, immortal doesn't mean you're strong, boy. Immortal means I get to beat your ass until I get tired. Yep. And the guy's like, please no, <laughs> no more. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, like the oh, first, so like good. actual, like somewhat strong guy we've seen was that was a magician dude. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I should probably just mention right now too. We were actually finally we're seeing death, which is uh, you know different, especially for the slime show because they've been against it kind of most of the time, and now they're just mm. just mowing everybody down. Oh yeah, and which is which is kind of nice to see. Even though like we really mm. don't know, like they're like we're, they're kind of just evil to be evil. Uh, we really don't know why they basically. Um, the, did they mention these, that at any point? These Akai characters, I can kind. Of, these Akai characters, they're more. They're mainly just, you know, just really arrogant. Just like. Yeah, I, just I think the they're probably, the world. It's like yeah. it's it's like it's like if you are the person who's seen a bunch of Isekai shows and then you become you become that character and you get these powers, yeah. you kind of have that mentality of like, oh, nothing's too serious. Like I'm just gonna pretend to be like an Isekai main character. Yeah. So that's like the attitude they had. So I, I kind of get that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, oh, actually, okay. So I, I forgot about the mage guy. I don't know if he's actually really strong, but he basically just like set himself up to blow up. <laughs> so I don't know how if he's like basically because remember they said like he was like prepared to die right there. Like yeah. he like uh, I don't know. If basically, like, if he would have made like, contact that, with them, he would have yeah. That that's of his old body. I don't know if it carries over when he possess um the other guy's body. Oh no 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 yeah, no. This is before. This is when oh, the orc lord okay, was gonna go for like. Yeah, oh, no, I don't think it was himself. I think it was just a landmine that he set there. And then if he would have like came closer, he would have just triggered well, the, the landmine no, in a sense. Because remember the, the old guy even said like basically like his death like the, the magician's death would have been the trigger to basically just let like to basically to just have that whole area like explode. Um <clears throat> that's what it made it so- if I would say go back and watch it, but no, it's not worth it. Um <laughs> No, I gotta say, like this episode, it was probably the most satisfying episode to watch out of the whole season. Yes. Oh yeah, and then the one, also the one thing we were worried about too is uh, where we mentioned it's like okay, we know that Rimuru needs to kill ten thousand people, but mm-hmm. but he but will he actually like go through it and actually kill these people? And then right. the death counter starts. I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> we'll let this we'll let this go up. I I got a mental <laughs> like Rimuru's attack was pretty lame. Uh, <laughs> I was expecting like a I was expecting like a giant. Job. No, no, I was expecting like a giant, like one hit kill, giant AOE spirit bomb, you know, you know, something that was like instantaneous and like a wide AOE, uh, like attack, you know, that's what I was expecting. But no, this guy shot down, like he had (laughs) goblets, like little water goblets, whatever. And then, and then he had lasers shooting through constantly. And to be fair, it was pretty slow. You know, I was expecting something more like, uh, like, you know, that, that threat that the the mage had about like the huge nuclear explosion. That's what Ku wanted. uh, Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Something more, something more satisfying. That was not satisfying whatsoever. It was really late. <laughs> that's that pretty late. I mean, it seems like a Rimuru move though, because like he because he was against killing humans, so he's basically just like putting them out, like just immediately and instead I mean, of like so, actually like you know, I mean, torturing or anything. He's still like pissed that. off though. So. Oh yeah, 
But then right. but it was kind of nice like, where you're listening to like the what is is her or is Oracle? I think Oracle. I'm gonna go with Oracle. <laughs> was with the with the voice where she was just like you know, rag, like oh, rack up sage. the kills like a thousand. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Oh Sage, sorry. And then it's like two thousand. And at three thousand, I'm thinking, okay, okay, this is actually happening. Uh, and I actually, I thought the move looked kind of cool. Actually, it was just basically uh, just like a bunch of like water balls, and then just you know, just shooting everywhere. <laughs> that's that's so lame. Why, why have that? We <laughs> okay, get giant okay. explosion. Wait, wait, wait. But the cool moves don't happen until he becomes the demon lord, no. or a demon lord, I should say. No, no, there's a reason why Malcolm Bay is so famous, bro. Explosions are everything, all right? Yeah, you gotta have a giant explosion. He's famous, but nobody really thinks of him as, <laughs> as like a <laughs> as high tier. They just think like, okay, we're gonna see some explosions. You just shut your mind up and watch. Um no, uh, I, yeah, I, I kinda I, I, I kinda like the ending, show. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. It's uh I, I feel like though, um God, what, are we down to the last I think we have two episodes left, don't we? Is it two? Uh, I, I think don't... I think it's the last one. I think that's the last one. I don't remember. We'll see. We have two. We have two but left. We, we still have two? Like, uh, season, yeah. the next part of the season yeah. in the summer as well. So it's not going to end. Yeah. So oh, right. honestly, I don't even. So I'm going to guess it's going to end with him fighting the mage. I don't know if he's going to really fight that that rainbow. It's, it sword. sounds like, but it sounds like the mage is just got to get caught up in like the, the sacrifice. So I don't know. Oh, I don't think it's gonna. No, I don't think he's no, gonna get caught up there. I don't oh, think he's okay. gonna get caught up. But, the, but, that the show. Problem, but the thing is, I'm sure he's gonna like fight Rumu when Rumu has evolved into a demon lord. Oh, he's a beast and just gonna knock right. him out. I think. I think it's just it's gonna be easy because the guy's like, oh, I could even take like a demon lord. I'm thinking, dude, you guys have been cocky like from the beginning, and you guys have gotten nowhere close to being able to take out anything. Yeah. So again, dude, mean, it's just like to be fair, oh, like Rumu was like a bunch of his people were cocky too, and so. Like, I, I don't know why, like, I find it so fucking annoying with this show, but other shows, I've loved it. Like, One Punch Man? Loved it. I don't care how much they spoke, because you know, like, this man's gonna die in one shot. So I would just let them kind of go on their whole spiel, and then these guys, I just can't stand, like, I don't know if it's just because the characters themselves, I just, I just hate them. Again, they're just terrible villains. I really don't know. I, I don't know why, like, I'm actually, like, uh, so hard on these guys and not some other shows, but fuck, dude. I don't know either, they're sir. Terrible it's actually. a mystery. Or not show, yeah, just, just terrible villains but but no it was very satisfying for some deaths even though um we really like i, I mean i still kind of like i feel like they were still pointless i mean they, they basically just beat they beat up people that were nerfed and then they just got fucking owned when they were out of the barrier and they didn't even mention the barrier once still right right <laughs> so uh, I, I'm so hung up uh, again here. Uh, again, again with that <laughs> like with that i guess maybe the the three the three teenagers who were isekai maybe they didn't know better right they just thought that they were strong and they just That's walked in and yeah. killed yeah. everyone left. Because I think the only one who really knew were the people, like the knights, right? The knights of the church. Those of them might have been the only ones that knew. Um, yeah. Yeah. But but regardless, it's it's fine if you hate the villains because that makes it more satisfying, right? Once they actually die, yeah. and like it was it was gruesome in a sense too. So like you wanted things to be done like uh, to to the villains, and I thought that the fight against the uh, like the one sword guy and then the brawler, like I thought that was really satisfying. Like the way that they met their end, totally worth it. And then you got Rumu, who who should be doing the most epic like revenge kill of all because <laughs> his man. village died, Wait. right? His village died. He is there to re like to like take revenge on his village. And like, what does he do? Just slowly go pew 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 pew. pew. <laughs> to be fair, that, that's a slime move though. That, 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 if I think that's how you really move, feel, that's sir. A slime move. Dude, why not use gluttony? You need ten thousand souls. How about you just use gluttony just and just and like envelop, <laughs> just envelop the whole camp? Yeah, you know, <laughs> like you're gonna be a demon lord, sir. How about some bloodshed? You know, like where's that bloodlust that you should like? Your mouth should be frothing with the amount of like rage you have right now, right? You just can't wait to kill them. <laughs> it's okay. But no, yeah. Pew, pew, pew. It's okay, we got, we got. It's it, it, the, it, the demon lord. It sounds like it oh, sounds like God. Rimuru needs to borrow some of that bloodlust from Ku over here. Yeah. Right, he needs to learn how to become a real demon lord. You know, I got tips for him if he wants it, but I'm not going over there. We have so. two episodes left, so we'll yeah. see. We'll see. we'll see. I got I got nothing more. I ranted way too much on this. All right. Yeah, but man, this episode was was really good though. Finally, really good. yeah, it was yeah. finally something to yeah. pay off for all the shit we've watched. <laughs> right. <laughs> this season. Yeah, I'll I'll say that too. So. That's it for Slime Tensei. And then I'm going to pass Log Horizon and we're going to, to uh, 
Kimono Jihan. So you guys can take it away. Oh, uh, yeah, Justin, yeah. you can start off. Okay. Um, I actually really like this week's episode. Um, I mm. think uh, I really, you know, wasn't the biggest fan of Yui when we got his introduction from last week because we just kind of see that he's kind of this ice terminator that's just there to, you know, take Akira back or protect her from whatever greater evil that admittedly at the time, you know, we didn't really know what that rationale was for. But exactly in this episode, we got to see, you know, why he's there, why he is um the kind of emotionless individual he is apart from you know wanting to protect akira and why he has the null stone attached to him Mm -hmm. um so i personally you know really appreciated the background in terms of um yuki or yui and akira's upbringing in the yuki ona village and Mm -hmm. how we get more insight into you know how yui you know, I guess fortunately, in a sense, matured a little bit quicker than Akira, which led to him becoming, you know, the chief and having all of the chief responsibilities. Um, and funnily enough, we, we we learn more about kind of the troubled past that this village has where all of the, you know, women in the village wear face masks because they don't want there to be any sort of animosity between like their looks and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, through Yui's kind of retelling of this past, We learned that, you know, the women, despite these face masks, it adds even further to like the animosity and towards like the greed in a sense of how they want, you know, Yui or this male chief of the village to love them and see them as like the most beautiful woman of the village. Um, So I really enjoyed that. And, and, And I also thought it was funny how. It seems like, you know, in a few different shows, I mean, we have Historia and, and Attack on Titan being the, the baby maker. We had um, Shiki's, you know, mom in a few episodes ago being the, the baby mm. maker of this perfect demon. And now we have Yui, who as the male chief, he is the baby maker for for all of the kind of continued population of the Yuki Onas. So the only thing I could think of was like death by snoo snoo because yeah. did you see that head lady, bro? She's yeah. about to rock his world. Man, <laughs> you know what I, I, mean? I fell for him like when he was coming back to uh you know their their sleeping quarters every night, and you could just yeah. tell like you had been through the ringer, and then here's Akira being like, Oh, he's Nisa, exhausted. Like, how was your day? Is it not really great being you know the chief? And he's just like, Oh my fucking god, like you know, if you only knew <laughs> the things I'd seen, Akira, but you know, he obviously has to has to keep everything straight faced and all that, but um, no, I, I personally really enjoyed that um, and getting kind of just that history of, you know, him trying to get Akira out of this situation. And then right. immediately, you know, in that one scene when when Akira comes to him and he's like, oh, you know, Yui, I, I wet the bed and I can't believe I wet the bed because, you know, I'm already, you know, 12, 13 or whatever. 14. And, yeah. 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 We allude to that. You know, it obviously wasn't that they pissed the bed. It was that he had like, you know, a wet dream or something. Or he's, you know, having this growth into adolescence. And then Yui's immediately like, oh, shit, like, you know. To your point, like, I'm already yeah, <laughs> I've already experienced the, the ongoing death by Snoo Snoo. Like I'm not gonna let my you know twin brother be corrupted in right. the same way. So um yeah, I, I thought that was all really great to see. And then once we got back, you know, to the current time and Akira trying to figure out, you know, how to save Kabane and all of them. Um, of course, you know, Kabane finds a way to melt himself out of the ice by breaking, you know, the upper half of his body off. So that's something that, you know, admittedly, I'm continued to be disappointed by just seeing how OP Kabane is. But I mean, it makes sense. So I won't. No, no, and... let's 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 remember immortality does not mean you're invisible. All right. You can still get fucked up. Yeah, so, so... So it, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, if it had to be anybody, of course, it's going to be Kabane. So right, right. Um, once he kind of breaks free and then he, you know, is trying to um, help Akira and everybody get out there. Um, it was interesting to see Akira kind of take on that villain um, tone of really kind of having a 180 and being like, you know, Kabane, like, oh, you know, leave us alone. Like, you know, you don't always need to be here. Like, I don't want to be with you guys anymore. And obviously, you know, we know uh, Akira is doing that to save them from Yui because he is just this really overpowered individual and he has a fear for you know his friend's life right um so i thought that was a a a good part and it wasn't you know akira just continuing to complain or to your point you know we may potentially see akira in the final dire moments pull out you know this insane ability which i'm hoping doesn't happen but you You know know, it's gonna happen let's be real (laughs) it's gonna happen so uh that's the one thing that i'll probably ultimately be disappointed in but um overall backstory of yui and akira really great and then um i really enjoyed seeing more of 
Nobimaru and kind of his face off with uh, Yui. And right. just now that Inari and the, the Kitsunes are now in the mix as well. So I'm assuming Colin's going to show up as well at some point. Maybe. But yeah, I thought it was yep. overall a, a decent episode. So yeah, I had no nice. like big glaring issues for it. Yeah, and then you know, whenever you get to see Inari again, you know, it's always really nice. I think I just have a thing for redheads I mean, and blue heads. Right. It's, so. um, it's, it's some nice eye candy because honestly, there there really isn't much eye candy in this show. So right, um, without you know, obviously getting into really weird territory. So we'll go <laughs> yeah, but, I'll just um, we'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're yeah. good. Totally, totally agree with that. And then you know, we get a little bit more lore background from Inari of just the relationship between the null stone and the life stone. Um, and who knows, you know, if that's just complete bullshit for Inari to continue to kind of get Kabane to be strung along in this greater overarching plot. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely, definitely interested to, to learn more about the, the, the wider world of kimonos. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hopefully there's a season two because I think next oh, week is yeah, the last totally. episode, right? So yeah. Uh, yeah, now that you flesh out all the characters, everyone is usable now or like actually able to do their job, right? AKA uh, uh, Akira. Um, yeah, maybe they can finally focus on like the darker side of like the kimono world. And, uh, yeah, it looks like, like, uh, they're kind of foreshadowing too that Inugami is not as strong as it used to be. Maybe because he's too laid back, he's kind of letting the kids do everything. Uh, so I wonder if like Inugami's time in a sense is, is close and he's mm. kind of like just raising these new kimono children to kind of be the new detectives and or be the bridge uh, between kimonos and humans. Um, that's so cool. yeah, I found that to be a little interesting. I don't know if that was, if that's what it was meant to be like a foreshadow to the uh, future arcs, but mm -hmm. yeah, no, I really love everything so far and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think the next week's episode should be a banger too. So. Oh yeah, I totally agree. I think we're gonna get a lot of great combat. You know, continued between Nobi Maro and Yui, and then obviously with Kabane now on the way. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a really uh, pretty animated fight of sorts. And right. then yeah, we, I think we definitely you know need a second season to really start to open up the other plot lines, and more importantly, you know what Kabane's story is, and then kind of why his parents left him, and you know with this lifestone and stuff. So. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh yeah, I think that's it for this week's episode. Agreed. Alright. Uh we went there for Kimo Jihan. Move on to our next show. Um you guys want to talk about I'm a spire so what for a little bit? Yeah, I'll uh, flip it back to you for this one, Ku. Yeah, so uh it looks like there's a reason why Kumoko's kind of playing the evil demon lord in a sense. Uh because all of a sudden, apparently, by having taboo level ten, you kind of know all the deepest, darkest secrets of the world. Right. And if things stay the way they are, you know, the world's gonna implode, explode, or whatever. The world's gonna end. And uh, you know, something about the Japanese and having like the church or re these religious groups <laughs> be the source of all evil, because it seems like it's it's they're the ones that for right. right they're honestly. the ones that cause this pandemic to occur i guess um so uh they did they, they ran through everything and i didn't take my time to like freeze each frame to, yeah to there's a lot the of you actually go back and freeze each frame of like characters from like the, the church in different backgrounds so i definitely yeah. recommend going back and pausing it yeah so those the were, there was a large lore dump and then you know since kumiko knows all this uh she knows that the world's gonna end soon and she needs to do something to save the world and i guess by being the evil demon lord and kind of like rocking the balance in a sense uh she's that's what she's trying to do right save the world mm -hmm. and uh to do that she needs to become even stronger and what do you do when you need to become stronger that's right you fight the biggest baddest <laughs> dude you know which is an earth dragon and uh that's basically what this episode was and then usually i hate these um these kind of episodes where it's mainly focused on like kumiko and just her like training arc i guess uh the but they, yeah but they did throw in a little bit of the um uh, of the human sides as well uh what was it like they brought back uh yamada for a few episodes or i mean for a few minutes uh it looks like his brother's friend the knight he was able to uh revive himself because he had a phoenix feather 
uh, on him. Yeah. Which Big the hero does. <laughs> yeah, so the the hero is supposed to have that on him in case they die, they can come back to life, right? It's a one time use, of course. And uh, for some reason, uh, Julius gave it to his his uh, friend, and um, yeah, that's what caused him to be able to revive and like he was able to tell the story of what happened to uh, Yamada. And uh, he also brought back the scarf. So I don't know if that's like a key component for later on. Um, but I guess that's the sign of a hero now. And uh, Yamada's going to inherit the the will that Julius had and try to like make the world a safer place for everyone. And he's going to be the hero. And then that was basically the... Oh, and then it looks like uh, Faye is going to evolve soon as well. Yeah. Um, which is kind of weird because when, when Kumiko is about to evolve, right? She She's a monster as well. Uh, she gets... She has like this sage in a sense, kind of like Rimuru from uh, uh, Reincarnate as a Slime, uh, kind of telling her like all these different information. Like, do you want to evolve? What kind of class do you want? You know, it doesn't look like Faye has any of that. She just all of a sudden say, "Oh, I'm going to evolve now." Yeah. So uh, it's kind of weird how how her mechanic works. So yeah. Definitely fitting for her being obviously the, the protagonist of the other side of, you know, the demons and, and monsters of her having more insight, exactly as you said, versus Faye. It's just like, okay, I'm going to pop back into my egg now and we're just going to see w- what pops out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I totally agree with with all the things you mentioned, Ku. I think, um, yeah, the opening was really great with the Taboo Level 10, getting to learn more about this world once again. Um for the human side, um, I didn't think it added too much for me apart from, you know, the rationale of what happened in the fight between um, Julius and, and his party and then, you know, the demons. And then obviously this individual in white uh, who uses the rot magic, which basically is like a Thanos snap. You know, they use that magic and literally it just turns everything into dust within its, you know, uh, area mm. of effect. So uh, I'm definitely interested in learning more about those different magic types, because I think even, um, you know, back when they switched back to Kumiko and she's kind of talking about like, okay, you know, how am I going to get to this level in which I can stop like this great calamity? And -hmm. as you mentioned, you know, her her rationale is like, oh, okay, I'm going to fight, you know, Araba, this this dragon, which she met uh, earlier in the season and hid from because she realized how powerful and how fearsome of a foe he is down in this uh, this labyrinth of a cave that they're in. Um, but more so what I remembered is that Kumiko also used, I think, rot magic. She talks about like her abyss magic and the different magic types that she has. And, and rot magic ends up being one of the other ones that she mentions. And I think that she uses against the um, the hornets that she's yep. fighting later in the episode to, you know, set up this arena where she can be a little bit more uh, mobile in the air. Because that's like the one kind of major uh, positive that she has going for her against this fight um, right. with Araba. Um but yeah, I, I think, you know, again, it's it's starting to really open up the world further and further, which I think we've always said is, you know, a really great thing to see. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for me, I want to continue to see more characters. I really love getting introduced to, to new characters from both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think I'm really excited as we move down here is seeing more sides from both, you know, the humans in, in their army of what do they have left now that, you know, Julius is no longer um, in play. And then all of the different generals that um, Kumiko and, and the Demon Lord side have. So, um, yeah, it's continuing to be a, a really great show and surprising for, for me personally as an isekai. I honestly didn't have the the biggest hopes for it. I just thought, hey, you know, it looks interesting. It, it's, you know, decent enough to kind of look at from an animation standpoint. I know some people weren't the biggest fans of the initial uh, CGI, but yeah, it's, it's it's doing everything right and it's definitely keeping me hooked. So. I'm um, definitely interested to see where, where things go from here. Yeah, and surprisingly enough, I just realized this. The show has 24 episodes, supposedly. Yeah, we got a lot of material in, in, in airtime, you know, to, to uh, be, so to speak, to work with. And to me, it kind of blows my mind that a show like this, I mean, I like it, but why does this show have 24 episodes and other shows only have like 11 or 12? Like, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't, don't know. The power yeah, of that guy's show. Isekai's, man. Uh, even then, yeah, I guess the the market's there, right? And you know, I don't, I don't know how well the because did, did this start as a, a web novel originally, yes. or the same okay. place where all the isekai show starts, where <laughs> ReZero and Mushiko Tensei and Overlord and all those shows, the same place where it all started. So I mean, it it, it makes sense. Uh, but... Yeah. 
I mean, I'm definitely glad because if it didn't, then I think obviously every week we'd be having a much different discussion if we were only yeah. you know, 12 episodes. It's kind of like, all right, yeah, like, I'm like, yo, come on, bro, we got to hurry up, right? Time. Like, yeah, where the, where the hell are we going? So, yeah, the, nice, the, the positives of having 24 episodes. Yeah, I, no, def- definitely. Like, I, like I, Justin I, said, it it was really hard to keep watching it as at like the first two or three episodes. But now it's really starting to pick up and, you know, it's definitely worth the watch. Uh, especially now that you have 24 episodes to work with, like you can definitely flesh out the story in a like uh, like satisfying manner. So yeah, I think it's just the thing of like it's you know don't want to counter chickens before they hatch, so to speak. Just because we have 24 episodes, things could still still go wrong. All oh, so. right, yeah, it could still be really shitty, but I yeah, mean, but we'll, I think we'll you know, where we've gone, I think we're 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 heading in the right direction. So. Um, mm-hmm. I guess I guess the only thing I'll ask is like, is it more action focus in the past because past couple of episodes because i remember like reading the web novel like the mm. f- intro was more comedic focus just just like oh, oh yeah i'm just a spider like i'm just doing all this because i'm a spider that's, that's what i've like that oh, sort of feeling. Uh, yep i think like the last like the last month or so all the episodes have had a decent amount of like combat scenes um mm-hmm. although it is still mostly cgi so you just gotta get past that part but it's not like uh, it's not difficult to watch. It's still done well in a sense, like well enough for you to watch it and not be bothered by it. But you can definitely tell it's, it's everything CGI. So, yeah, I th- I think if anything, the logic that Kumiko uses when it is time to get serious, I really enjoy. Um, and I'm glad to see, you know, kind of to your point, David, where at the beginning immediately when we were just seeing Kumiko kind of treat things as a joke, do a lot of breaking of kind of like fourth wall type stuff, talking about, you know, like current things and and those type of things i was a little bit drawn away but now that we're kind of getting a what i would call a, a healthier balance of good amount of combat good a lot good amount of lore progression and the expansion of more characters um i've all been pleasantly surprised from that so that's uh that's mm. kept me in here but yeah uh, i think i think yeah. all we really want to know is just how does kumiko get to be in this demon lord who right now how does it tie together shit? exactly yeah. that's it's just everything needs to come together all the webs if you will we want it to come together we're seeing yeah. the different threads but we want to get to the the end points we want to get those answers as we're always saying so right uh but yeah so that's it for uh so i'm a spider all right we're in it there for i'm a spider move on to our next show let's talk about wonder rake priority Oh boy! Oof. The, man, uh, you took the word out of my mouth, Threaten. <laughs> there was that, a, oh man, there, go ahead. There was a lot of stuff, and also there was a lot of like really like I guess heavy heavy subjects. Like there was this like one like it just kind of kept it just kind of kept coming. I don't even really know where to like talk, like to begin like with that part. Um, I mean, I think we can eventually get to that part. I think if we want to start off like and more of a lighthearted focus you know we start the episode with uh momo or momo going on this date with this guy and kind of you know walking through like them going to the theater her kind of having butterflies and everything um mm-hmm. and you know how we're kind of portrayed at first of like what the understanding of this date was and then you know shortly after then we get the real story when all of the girls you know learn that momo is on a date and they're like oh my god like was it a girl was it a guy and she's like oh it's a guy and they're like what a guy like you know <laughs> spill the tea sister like we need to know like what what happened and then you know she tells them the truth of hey you know so i got asked yeah. out by this guy he thought i was a guy and when i showed up in a really pretty dress he was just the fan <laughs> Yeah, yeah that, that's when uh, that's when the show becomes uh, not so lighthearted and happy. <laughs> Dude, it took a dark turn real quick. Right, like, right. you want to talk about one eighties? Last like, five uh, minutes. Like, oh yeah. my god! But, but even before, yeah. Go ahead, Taylor. Well, uh, oh, oh, I was just gonna say, funny yeah. story about that for you, especially Ku, is that you know how your running joke is to not eat before watching Higurashi. Oh, yeah. So, like, Higurashi doesn't really bother me, but I literally had to put down my food for that last scene. <laughs> like, it totally just, like, ruined my appetite. Like, that yeah. was... But, okay. again, be- before we get to that last yeah. scene, we also had, you know, the scene between um, where Nehru is explaining uh, Akka and Uru Akka and how mm-hmm. they are in these mannequin bodies. And so yeah. I'm interested to see what was your guys' take on that revelation and kind of... 
first it was like almost like a debate because like they they bring that that topic up and then that that damn thing with the date happens and they just take off. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I want to know what happened. Like, what, what about these two guys? Like, where I thought they weren't actually gonna come back to it. I thought they were basically just gonna kind of leave it as like as they're just like two mannequins that are in those bodies um, and then just moving on. But mm-hmm. uh, but they're not evil. No, um, fuck that. They're still evil. Well, still yeah, they're people. They're evil. So I think that automatically makes them a little bit more evil. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, so it, it's definitely interesting to see kind of the understanding of okay, you know, they're these renowned scientists. They're the actual leaders of this foundation, or they're the founding members of the Japan Plotty. I went back and actually looked up like what the hell oh, the yep. organization is called. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, it definitely brings in more questions. And again, you know, verdicts kind of still out of like, okay, are they good? Are they bad? I think if anything, you know, if you're transferring your entire body to a a mannequin robot figure, it's like, all right, you know. It's kind of kind of weird yeah. in its sense, but what if we all what if we what if we what if we do that? If you could well, like live forever in like a so, robot body, I mean, so that part of it, not, not in this world. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I won't get ahead of something. We get to re-zero. We'll talk about the flaws of immortality. <laughs> right, right. Part of it though, I don't actually, I don't think that part of me like thinks like they're not evil just because they actually, I guess, took that extra step and in, in a sense uh, uh, experimented on themselves and not like others. They actually like, you know. Tried it, like they tried it upon themselves. I don't even know. Were yeah. they sick? Were they old at any point? Or did they just kind of like say... Cause they nope. both, I don't think so. I think they're just continuing to, you know, go after their kind of goal. Project of, you know, yeah, yeah, project. I mean, it's <laughs> typical of scientists. You know, they're trying to answer this really extensive and expansive question of, you know, like the answer to life, the answer yeah. to death, like, you know, these larger than life questions. And so... It, it makes sense in that regard. And, and I think, you know, actually at the end as well, when we get into kind of like the real 180 and darkness of things, they also do talk about like, you know, what the mission is of these group of girls and like, what is this greater evil that they're fighting against? But again, before getting to that, I think we're also skipping over to the fact of the interaction between I and her teacher and the whole art ex- exhibition that yeah. they went to. Every time that those two speak and they start saying something about how they, like you know they like one they 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 like something, I keep thinking, oh god, this is when it's going to be like you know she's going to reach out to the teacher, and it never happens. And I had to just exhale. I was like, okay, good. Um, still don't trust that guy. <laughs> it still feels, I don't know. I, how do you feel about eyes like one eighty to him? Because I'm it seems like you know about... even or go ahead, yeah. Well, no, I was just going to say, I'm confused. I mean, I guess we're going to get our answer next episode because she flat out asked him, um, yeah, you know, like what nice. happened with her friend. So I'm I'm glad that she did that because that will pr- hopefully answer some questions. But I don't really have a lot of thoughts leading up into it because we've been seeing everything through eyes. Eyes. <laughs> um, and she obviously, I, I wouldn't say that she's like a, what do they call it? Like a perfect narrator or tr- like a trustworthy narrator. We're seeing everything from her and it hasn't been super clear. So um, mm. he... He was definitely framed to be pretty sketch and then not. So Yeah. Do you feel that when we do see the the painting being, you know, the picture of a grown up version of I and him kind of reiterating mm-hmm. to her of like he, you know, decided to draw her as this older version because he recognizes, you know, the lot of the potential that she has. Do you think that's something that made you think a little bit differently about this guy? Like, exactly as you said, Taylor, like, when we first see him, we're just like, yo, this guy's sketchy as fuck. Like, is he, he doing some weird stuff I mean, with the kids? Or I still thought it was creepy. I, like, if, yeah. I, I'm just, like, as a young girl, like, if I had a teacher who was, like, moving in on my mom, had the some one, weird relationship with my friend who then killed herself and is drawing grown-up pictures, or not drawing, painting, whatever, grown-up mm-hmm. pictures of me, to show me my potential, like there's so many red flags there. <laughs> like, I think it'll exactly. depend. On, I think it'll depend on his answer, basically. Like, yeah. Uh, with her friend, um, it, it definitely helped to find out that he actually likes her mom. And supposedly, yeah, supposedly, yeah, like as a, you know, it could still be a scapegoat. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Okay, so it'll really come down to kind of what happens next episode. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I just tend to think of her as like an unreliable narrator. So I really don't think that we're meant to know 100%. Right. True. But, I, I was, but going back to the mannequins, I forgot that they were basically like, I think they're uh, like in the middle of their lives because I forgot of what they look like before. And they look like, you know, top notch. Like they were, they were at in like their, their peak prime. prime. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Or, and then I like how they said like, oh, like, oh, like one of them looked really hot, but they didn't say anything about the other guy. 
<laughs> yeah, they got yeah. like a, a spoiled apple or something yeah. like that. This is yeah. like, oh, god damn it. Yeah. And I think that was, so. that was that Uraka? I think that was uh, I think so. the long hair guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The other guy has pink hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one's my favorite so. of the two mannequins. <laughs> but... <laughs> All right, oh, now man. that we've gotten everything else out of the way, we can get to the real meat, for lack of a better word, of this episode with the, yeah. the conclusion. So That was heartbreaking. I hate animal violence, even if they are magical, creatures. semi-corporeal yeah. creatures. I mean, yeah. you really do feel for Momoe because, you know, this whole episode has really been the continued struggle with kind of this gender identity and panic. You know, her alligator was this one individual that really didn't view it in any way you know it's just completely a um pure friendship or you know mm-hmm. kind of that mother daughter or son kind of relationship so mm-hmm. um to have what happened to panic at the end and just him getting completely one sliced to pieces and then this you know butterfly silent hill pyramid head looking thing feed panic to momoe yeah, it was it was gut wrenching for sure. Like, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about it besides that because I don't know why that happened or what that thing is or why See, it exists the, or what the, its goals are. The thought, or... I, the thought I had is because it's almost like one of those like if somebody is going to be kind of like revived in a sense or like brought back to life, like it's basically like one of those like exchange for a, for a life because uh-huh. yeah, it basically made it sound like because that thing didn't appear until. They said, like, you know, she saved her friend mm-hmm. or she revived, but we didn't actually see anything. Yeah. We just, uh, yeah. I don't yeah, know. Kind of kind of kind of kind of like like how the, the friend was briefly revived and then yeah. you know, she's kind of like, oh, thanks. And then pooped away. And then, you know, now this butterfly head creature mm-hmm. came yeah, so, into the mix. So, so what are your guys' know. thoughts on that? Uh, well, well I, it depends on like what their kind of term, like, like how they actually take revive. Like, it, yeah, like do you think mean, is it some darker is, mean to it of like, yeah, the like, reason a, that this butterfly head appeared is because of the actions Momoe took or? Yeah, I, I think I think it. Well, I thought it was more yeah because of basically like a, like a life was in a sense like revived or brought back then basically, you know, death in a sense came to basically take back something. Cause right. Even though I don't know, it's that, that's I guess that's kind of how I saw it. Um, I also still need to see like what like what revive like revive actually means to them like is she going to be back in a physical form or Mm -hmm. was it basically how did she just get to move on in a sense and she wasn't like stuck in limbo or whatever this is that they that they're with that they're in with the dreams Mm -hmm. i have no idea yeah there's still so much stuff that they have to answer in like two episodes and yeah and it's definitely something that when i saw you know apart from obviously now this over what they call the overwhelming fear of death you know, taking over Momoe. Um, the whole part where Aka and Uru, Uru, Uru Aka are explaining, you know, how the entire mission of what they're doing is to fight this greater entity known as Thanatos, and that they need warriors of Eros, is what they <laughs> call them. And, 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 and yeah, I was thinking of Thanos, exactly. <laughs> and, and and the warriors of Eros being, you know, I, Nehru, Rika, Momo, who, you know, have all kind of had a friend, you know, either commit suicide and all these things. And now, opens up a march, much larger question. And exactly to your point, Seren, like, with only two episodes left, I'm really concerned of, like, you just opened, like, a, <laughs> a whole other, like, yeah. greater evil and world into the mix. Like, how the hell are you going to bring this together in a a meaningful way that we can get, you know, sensical answers? So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We don't know. I, like, right? I actually have nothing to add on to like what you guys just said. Like, certain I agree with you. Those are basically that was basically how I interpreted it as well as that that thing came to be because her friend was revived in some form or another. Her goal was accomplished. Um, mm-hmm. But again, I don't, I don't know why. I just took it to mean that way. And well, um, we'll there is just out, like, so much that got introduced that I'm kind of my head's just kind of spinning. I mean, we also have to figure yeah, out like same. like why like why she completed her mission then and not the others yet like why was hers able to be completed and and like even though like everybody's doing the same things uh just with different people but theirs aren't complete yet i kind of suspect that that's more uh like um what's the word like uh pacing directed i think that that's maybe why they had her do it first rather than it being significant that it was her first for any reason like Mm -hmm. um i feel like if they're gonna have to go down the list of like each of them like successfully revive somebody or if if, as like events unfold and we learn more and things happen i feel like the main stuff is going to be around i and maybe even um naidu and 
maybe it was just kind of like convenient to have it be Momoe that this happened to first. That's just my gut feeling. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's a very valid point too of like now if we have to get all these other girls like either success or failures in reviving their friends, like again, with how much time we mm. have left, like how is that going to be done in a a meaningful manner? Well, we very so. well might might have a season two. I mean, really, it's up Hope, to them uh, if they want to do it. <laughs> like, yeah, they're, if they're just going to drop this greater <laughs> otherworldly beings of, you know, Warriors of Eros and Thanatos, like, there's got to be. Like, there's no way yeah. you're going to wrap this up in two episodes. I have to admit, though, like, I'm not really loving the fact that they introduced all of that. Like, I was really starting to appreciate the fact that this was really something that had kind of a fantastical spin on a very realistic struggle that a lot of people deal with. Um, I just thought that th even though I'm not a big fan of the fighting and I kind of zone out when it happens, like I appreciate that some people <laughs> like it and uh, it's not fair. overwhelming <laughs> to the show. Um, and it kind of just is like a different way without like just beating you over the head with like the depression that comes with the, yeah. the, the heavy subject matter. So I liked the way they were telling it. And now that they actually are going a very fantastical route, I feel like the overall message is going to get really diluted. Yeah, I think yeah, that, that's like Sren said many episodes ago, like this is kind of <laughs> becoming Kingdom Hearts. If you yeah, really think about oh God, it. True. Like, you know, it starts with this great fantastical kind mm -hmm. of plot line, and you think, you know, we're getting to these answers, and then it just all of a sudden as we're getting near the end, <laughs> boom. And it's like, oh, holy fuck. Like hopefully it doesn't get as diluted as the Kingdom Hearts series has gotten, admittedly. But mm -hmm. yeah, I can't help but thinking like that's that's where we're going right now. The Warriors of Light, the you yeah. know, holders of darkness there's gonna be seven princesses the whole nine like yeah <laughs> we're really potentially setting up for a a, a big big adventure so hopefully somehow not... can come back <laughs> yeah man right hopefully he just went back in that necklace and is is getting recharged but we'll see i don't probably, know probably not that man got yeah sliced and diced <laughs> yeah Wait, who are you talking about Panic? also what yeah the, also the when, alligator yeah. also when like death itself takes you out probably not <laughs> Oh, I didn't yeah, think about that either. Because yeah, it's pretty much like that person was the Grim Reaper. I didn't even think yeah. about that with the scythe, and that's why you know now they're like, uh oh, mm -hmm. Momoi's got the overwhelming fear of death, and then you know the final scene that we see is her rocking back and forth in her Which, room, afraid well, to go to sleep. Well, the, the one thing though, I don't really get like because it really didn't look too much different from like all the other things she's been facing. Like those things look more terrifying than this fucking butterfly. Um, so I, I really don't. No, like what I guess I don't know if it was just because like maybe the, the aura it was coming like that was coming from the thing or what, but I just uh, thought like a lot of the things that they've been facing have been a lot more like uh, you know. No, if anything, it might be just due to the fact that still she was still in shock that her friend revived but just disappeared, and then the fact that the her alligator pet just died. That's a good point. Yeah, a lot of things yeah. happen in like a very short amount of time. If anything, right. I thought this butterfly thing was one of the creepiest things we've seen so far. Really? You think so? Yeah. Like, oh, especially God, with yeah. the face opening up and, yeah. you know, the uh, small, like, just dried out worse. head and it's just like... Yes. I've seen worse. Uh, I mean, I've seen, I've seen, <laughs> yeah, worse, but for this show, I think that's kind of like the, the darkest yeah. thing yet of just like, all right. And then they mentioned the name Frill, like, oh, you know, Frill expects me to do something. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right. Sure. Just man, again, we it's like we're opening is. so much shit, like, who, yeah, yeah, who the hell is Frill now? Like, <laughs> man. So we'll, we'll see. see. Uh, we'll see. I think I'm good. Same. Same. All right, that's got Ant there for our one rate priority. Then move on to our next show. Let's talk about ReZero. God. Ooh, well, really, ooh, it really was basically all about just like Beatrice and Subaru saying the same things to each other over and over and over again. That's all I remember. That lasted that. for a very long time. It did. So yes. long. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if if I was watching that like just on my computer, I would have again just skipped some time. Uh, until <laughs> wow, Rue, hey, so, I, 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 so emotional. I, I, I would have no, no. It okay. was emotional it, it, the first three times. <laughs> By the time we got to the sixtieth time, it wasn't emotional anymore. Like they just yeah. like to all beat right. it in all your right, head Taylor. until it loses all depth. <laughs> when you're well, you're a four hundred year old girl stuck in this okay, library okay. forever. No. It's kind of hard to believe a blood cool. that just comes out of nowhere. Okay, right? cool. okay. That's that's the one thing that I have really against ReZero is they do that a lot with Subaru. Yeah. Like where every they, episode, they'll, feels like. they'll repeat the same little thing over and over again. It happened with Amelia. It happened with mm -hmm. Rem. It happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know who else it happened with because they're. Um, I'm sure <laughs> it basically happened with everybody. But it, so that's like the one part where it's just the more, yeah, like first a couple times we get it. It's, it's I mean it's an emotional moment, all that stuff. But it's just like 
they're saying the same thing like, like over and over again. It's just, uh, I don't know. No, but sometimes yeah. it's, it's not like the message may be the same, but sometimes it's just based on how you say it. Right? The way you time. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> sometimes you just have to deliver it in a different manner for the point to get through, you know? Exactly. And, and I think in this different way, tones they, of... what should have been done from the very beginning, and I agree, Taylor, starting with your guys' points of like, we've seen this scene of, you know, Beatrice and Subaru going back and forth for many, many times now. But it is All finally right. good that we got the context of, okay, you know, why did Beatrice create, you know, this greater library within Roswell's mansion? And we see the scenes, you know, with Echidna leaving her the Tomb of Wisdom because Echidna, you know, is kind of knowing like, okay, this sacrifice on her end is going to have to be made. Beatrice mm -hmm. is being left here for kind of her, her own good in Echidna's eyes and, you know, her telling her to wait for that person. And then more so, we also get um, insight into Roswell because when Beatrice, you know, is talking about her first building up this library and kind of following the words of the Tomb of Wisdom, we see, you know, Roswell being this individual that's visiting the library over and over that, again and looking into the background. Roswell, because like they're saying, so is it just like, is it just Are you going like to talk about his, his predecessor, how it, he came in with like, oh, my predecessor is just, told is, me? Is it like his sons or is it like literally like, is he like cloning himself? Like what's going on there, so that's, Roswell? I thought it that's was what more I was a wondering. cloning situation. That's, okay. Yeah, that's... it's either cloning or I, I don't know, because if you remember one of the Roswells, when he sit down, he's reading a book about like the transfer of souls. Okay. Mm. That's... And I, I thought more so if that was for Echidna, but I guess now it would make yeah, more sense of him that's trying to extend his own life. Yeah. yeah, because because he kept he keeps talking about, talking about yeah the four hundred years and so I guess yeah I guess we can assume it is just like Roswell like transferring his souls from one body to another then. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question for you guys too. Sorry for like this. Um, actually, we'll, we'll finish this. Continue. Okay, and then Yehu actually said so. All Roswell is Roswell's descendant, so it's his own son, is what Yehu and Chad is saying. Okay, I'm sorry so if I'm saying so, your name wrong. Yehu. So it's not so it's not the same Roswell from like way back. It's like so it's like basically. So what? So what? So the Roswells that's fall it's just they're just following their ancestors, they're just sniffing for Echidna all this time, just because. But the, of, to like, me, that their, doesn't make sense. It's the book, though. But they basically, it's the, it sounds like they just they follow the book. But I guess uh, so the David's point is like, how do they have the same level of emotion for a teacher like, that they yeah. don't they don't know? It's just their father being like, "Hey, I really simped over this Echidna girl. Like, you should do well, the okay, same." Okay. I have a theory. I have a theory. I have a theory. What if the only way you can transfer your soul is into your biological son? And so, really, he's kind of like erasing whatever was in that son, and kind and, of and man, that could be man, fair. Man, and I think gross. it's just to say, like, we we don't we haven't seen enough to know like how no. how does that happen? So right. Um, and I'm mm. sure there's, there will probably be insight into it, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just something I think that's fair as well. Like, how has Roswell or, you know, his descendants continued to keep the same mission in mind? Because the Roswell that we see right now that's with, you know, Amelia and um, Ram, Ram, he's obviously still very fixated on the, <laughs> the Tomb of Wisdom and, yeah. you know, carrying forth with oh Achilles we had the answers will. for the blizzard from last week so they they feel yeah. that it's yeah so that was well. good we we got to yeah. learn that roswell likes to to plan ahead okay no <laughs> surprise real I also, we, got, also, we got the bunnies too i was gonna ask about like the, the mm -hmm. yuzu so the um, was it was the one in the the black the uh the black outfit is she the one that that's mostly mostly close to garfield what? no i think shima the one shima, in the white Shima's is in the one, garfield because okay. she's the one that calls him guard chan or you know boya okay, so, or whatever the nickname is for him and okay, I forgot, like, the, so the whole point of like them like they have to destroy the crystal the original rizu to get rid of the barrier right it's like it's part of it is the trial then the other part is like the the barrier or the, the crystal because that holds all the mana that's what i took it as understanding okay. is like okay amelia did her job with destroying whatever echidna's part or involvement in the the barrier was and then exactly as you said the crystal with Ryuzu was now the other part that needed to be yeah. okay. dispersed but did, did did one of them like die there permanently like should i be sad i think, I the, white, I think the white one did shima. shima the white one okay weren't well, they all wearing white no, they're, except they're for all, the one black yeah, one they're all white yeah besides the one the one the doll cast in a sense yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. so mm. that yeah <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> I, I know I don't know I don't know what happened with, with uh Fushima when she did she like did she take it somewhere or she just when she destroyed it it had to sacrifice her body or what? Yeah. I mean and Yahoo and Chad, if you you know have answers, definitely without spoiling if you can, like give us that insight because yeah, you know we're obviously fair. We need Yeah, that. we're we're trying to put the, the pieces together and if it's you know fairly obvious then 
let us know because i don't think mm. all five of us would be you know kind of scratching our heads if it was as obvious as something that we um, haven't seen yet it's cool that subaru and uh Beach... oh next episode for you is the answer okay so we oh, just wait okay. for it next uh, next week then Right, because cool. as of right as of right now, there's nothing that's concrete, right? Like as for Roswell and his descendants, how does he know all this? Uh, what happened to Rezero? Uh, right. I don't think any of that. The only thing that's been answered for sure this episode is that did Beatrice ever accept Subaru as the that person? Then the answer is yes. And now we're on to where Amelia is, and we are going to take out those pesky rabbits. So yeah, damn bunnies, man. Yeah. yeah, so talking about Beatrice. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it's I think it's still really cool that you know, hopefully like if if super if uh Beatrice is like you know Subaru's uh spirit in a sense, I think that would be really cool if you know if she basically just like follows him now. I think it's just I mean, yeah, I think they, they yeah, they, they got that yeah. pack for me and it was right. the whole well, you know I back and like, forth. Of, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Like once like a if it, you know if there's like a new a new mansion that's being built or something like that, if he's mm -hmm. just gonna stay there, if she's actually gonna be like on the adventures with them, which is I, what I'm actually I think, hoping. I mean, just, I assume she's gonna be like the puck of for for Subaru. He's just he's awesome. just gonna follow her. Yeah, the whole, follow her awesome. the whole time. I will take it. Um, will yeah. take it. <laughs> but no, I mean to the point too of like the back and forth between Beatrice and Subaru that we've seen so many times. The part that I really enjoyed was Subaru, you know, giving that other side of immortality, where you know the main reason that Beatrice was really hesitant to you know accept oh. his offer is that she was saying like why does it matter you know you'll die mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. all this time for you is literally like a blink of an eye to me and Subaru really kind of you know admittedly doing those those protagonist talk no jutsus that we've seen <laughs> in other places of being like hey it's, it may be such a short time but for me like you know this is me giving you my entire life of memories and it's something that you know it should be valued and mm -hmm. it was you know admittedly pretty meaningful i think at least between the both of them to kind of share that that change in logic obviously it's very convenient to now have that partnership come through but i thought it was a good way of um getting beatrice to have that realization of you know really cherishing the moments even if it is a short time for her mm -hmm. it means yeah. more you have to look at both sides right it's not right. A, it's not a, it's not a one-way street you know in terms of a relationship everything is a a give and take at the yeah. end of the day and then to me, it kind of made sense of how they always had to argue for long periods of time before Beatrice finally took in Subaru's words, right? Uh, if you if you think about it, it has to be, you know, someone who's had the this this foundation built for the past 400 years that this is what I need to do. This is what I find to be the truth, right? And then for some guy to come and kind of like shake your foundation, like your belief, and have you change your opinion on things, that's... That's going to take a lot of work, uh, especially if you think about it, like, say, you're trying to change someone's belief on their religion, but changing from, say, Christianity to being a Muslim, right? It's 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 pretty damn hard. And then for you to do it in a way that's actually uh, beneficial, not just to you, to Subaru, but to Beatrice as well, right? Not just putting on a crutch and lying to her saying, yeah, I'll be that person for you. Now let's get out of here. More like, you know. You can be your own person. I'm not going to be that person for you. But if you do live with me, I promise you that, you know, I can do this, this, and this for you, right? So mm -hmm. I, I guess to you guys, it might have been to the part where it was just, like, ongoing and too much. But I think it was necessary just because of, like, how strong her resolve was for, like, what Amelia left – not Amelia uh, – what Echidna left for her and the fact that she left this book for Beatrice to follow. And then, you know, Beatrice was just following it to the T. So kind of like with Roswell, right? You can't really blame them if that's what their favorite person gave them. And that's what they chose to believe as the absolute truth. So uh, that's that's what I took from it. You guys aren't wrong. I mean, like, I get I totally get where you're coming from, like 100 percent. I can understand arguing about it and every, them arguing with each other. And I do agree with Justin that I found it pretty meaningful when Subaru was talking about like time and you know, mm -hmm. what that means for him to give that time to her and all that kind of stuff. I, I totally agree with all of that. I just think that for like for me, it cheapens it to just have the same words said over and over and over again. But that's just me. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, it's just a difference of opinion. Like, I was... no, I think that's completely fair. Um, One mm -hmm. thing I wanted to ask, though. So Beatrice doesn't know about Subaru's return to death ability, right? No. no. OK, no, uh, only, only uh, good, only I didn't think know. so. I mean, she obviously knows that he has like some 
affiliation well, with like I don't know the it, it might be different or anything. It might be different. I, well, it's, it sounded like earlier, like he does know or he knows something like that. So, but so then if if it's basically if it's something in the book, then I would think then she would know too. Then um, yeah, yeah, that's what, is, what I was thinking of. How much does Beatrice know? Because what doesn't a lot of the her pages blank? So isn't she? It is true. Like, yeah. In, like, yeah, so that's, a lot of things. that's well. And, and the only reason know. I thought of that was for probably a dumb reason. The reason I brought it up was like I was thinking of if Beatrice did know, then it kind of cheapens the thing of Subaru, you know, like when he's uh, trying to find the <laughs> final door and then he, you know, burns his hand to open the door. Like if Beatrice knew, she'd just be like, oh, well, if he dies, like he'll just revert back and then. Oh, well, well technically, oh, yeah. you can't, like, if I remember correctly, uh, 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 Subaru can't just die until he finishes his bet with Roswell. I think that's the the point. So at yeah, this point, okay, this is okay. the, this is this is the final run. Like I know how I was joking about how you know I pray to God if Subaru dies next, it won't be like <laughs> before all this. Uh, but yeah, I think at this point, Subaru can't die until he finishes his bet with Roswell. Okay, because I, it, it it would really like then his next death if before the bet finishes would be the last. I think. Yeah. yeah, and 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 that makes a lot of sense because yeah, otherwise it just really every time Subaru faces death, it really cheapens the value of it. I guess mm. when I mean, when you do think about the yeah, larger picture, it's like this whole this whole second part of the second season. Like they are so committed to not using the return my death, and so so far I've been it's been pretty pretty well. I don't know like how well they keep up in the future, but like they're really committed mm. for this part. Like okay, so it sounds like you, uh, from you who Roswell doesn't doesn't actually know about the Subaru uh, death. Uh, death trigger. Okay. Uh, he knows that he knows that Subaru can come back, but he doesn't know that Subaru has to die for it to trigger. Yeah. Okay. Seems okay. like. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I was leaning towards that too. I don't think Beatrice would know just because of how she's reacted and yeah, each it would make sense, yeah. Right? yeah. But so. yeah, that book that book does throw you off because we don't really know exactly what's in the book per se. Yeah. So mm-hmm. apart from David's point, I'm very just alluding to like a lot of it being blank. Um, right. Yeah. 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 Just, then, yeah. Go ahead, David. Uh, I was just gonna say like um. I guess, like, this season, like, really, like, just fleshed up. He's just a character. Because I didn't really care about her in season one. I just felt like we don't, like, see much of her character. So I really like how much they expanded all this. And I'm excited like that she gets to join Subaru as, as like, her spirit contract. And, like, yeah. hopefully, like, and I guess, like, hopefully this, like, when, like, Subaru ha- like, well, doesn't want to use the Return My Death, like he says, like, hopefully they, that Beach just be there to help as like the clutch for him like that doesn't always have to rely on that then yeah and i remember when i was was thinking about it in the first season where i'm like okay 10 out of 10 if they become a pair (laughs) you got you got what you wanted sir the first half of the second first part okay Uh, i was gonna say first part of the second season yeah when i was when i was kidding i was like oh 10 out of 10 if this happens and then oh, I, I did not see it at all happen. I was completely kidding. <laughs> now it's 10 out of 10. Paid off, man. Yeah, oh, we right. here. we're here. Yeah. Um, no, last thing I would say is I, I really enjoyed kind of the cute characterization of when Subaru and Beatrice arrive, you know, in front of Amelia and the Bunnies. And then literally the last line is one thing of that Beatrice has said many, many times and very fitting to her character. Just like, don't blame me for whatever happens next. Yep. I think she said that like <laughs> tons of times before, like either mm-hmm. shoving Subaru out of the floor and stuff, but it's just like, those small details are, are 10 out of 10 for me Dude, as well. Like, I love when they do that. Like, my favorite comedy moment, like, some of my favorite comedy parts in this show is when, basically, like, they talk about how hard it is to find a library, and this motherfucker, just, whatever door he opens, boom, he's in there. There she is. <laughs> yeah, she's and, so like, yeah, like, Oh, NPC number one. <laughs> <laughs> like, those moments I thought, like, every time, like, because he just nonchalantly like, just opens up the door and just immediately picks up a conversation with her. Like, he just knows he's walking in that re- the correct door. He's got mm-hmm. that confidence, man. Mm-hmm. He's a man on a mission. Yep. I mean, I love fake, those moments. the fake confidence, but still. Yeah, right? I mean, hey, right. and, and talk about the, do. Yeah, talking about the li- library, RIP a library. We won't have those moments again. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. That's man, funny. I'm sad we're not gonna we're not gonna see more about uh Pandora and this gate. So Oh yeah. Because I imagine the next episode's just gonna be Subaru and Beatrice going beast mode, destroying all the bunnies, and then them being like all right, we made it out of the sanctuary, oh, and then there's um, going to be some like big drop. But what's next? But will Rem wake up? No, nah, nah. Okay. She's she's moving on for a while more. <laughs> no, I think. It. But I just remember too. I gave Puck, up on that. Puck okay. mentioned too right. how um was it Roswell? You don't have, was what did he say? You don't. You're not like a devil or whatever, or you don't have the. 
something about like a like a like or it's he mentioned something you're not like this one person and i thought i, I wonder if he's mm. referring to um the the melancholy witch from before in the flashback oh hector, hector? That, yeah, yeah that beats the shit yeah, that's out of what him. i thought yeah, yeah there's okay. definitely something that we obviously we have to learn there so mm. will we learn it though so that, that's mm, all for like next future, season. like season, that's a decent three season, like, yeah. like that and like Pandora and even and mm-hmm. and, and Rem of course, like we still need like Cornelius and uh, Gluttony, like how many person. how many years was the first season? Like when did that come out? Like 2015, 2016? 2016, I think. Oh my god! Well, hopefully we get it before it five true. years. Well, well Trek, you can always read the light novel. Uh, yeah, and I, and yeah, absolutely. I, I heard, There's I so many other things I, I want to read before that. Yeah, but I heard Reading that like the, the first season the like, things, it's caught like, up a lot to the light like, novel. So yeah, like, yeah. I, yeah. I think that's why it took so long too. Oh God. Okay. Isn't it with light novels too? You don't always get a lot of images as well, depending you on get, like, like, novel light. No. You get like none. Oh, book. That's the thing no. for me. Like, I'm a very visual. Like, hey, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, I can learn from it, but it's like I, I need those visuals to really Same. bring it to light. I'm a child. Um, for me, I had a hard time because I've actually always really liked Subaru's character pretty much from like the get go. I always liked Subaru, mm-hmm. uh, but I found him to be like a lot less empathetic of a character in the light novel. So I really, really, really didn't want to have to turn to those. So it's it gives pretty, me a better pretty annoying in them. And so it gives me more person. of a reason to hate the man then. OK, <laughs> so maybe I should read wow. it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm done. We're, we're over limit yeah. time quite a bit. I think we covered <laughs> so. everything. All right, so that's going to be it for ReZero. Move on to our next show. We get to Dr. Stone. That's right. Ooh, okay. you, wish, you wish my baby would come true. It kind of did, but the way it did it, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> You're so unsatisfied like, with it. <laughs> Power well, friendship. Is, okay, the one person I hated more than Tsukasa was Hyoka. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker kills Sukasa. <laughs> like when this happened, but at first when the whole thing, just like how they were talking, I was like, "Oh man!" I was like, "This man's gonna die." And then, but then, just like thinking of like how, like just like in the future, if it was possible to have to have Senku and Sukasa as like a tag team, I thought like, "Damn, that shit would actually be probably pretty sick to actually see that." Like they would probably like or you know, already like amp the like the the future fights. So already I was thinking, okay, I could see this, and then it didn't get to see it for very long, and I was basically just boom, stabbed right in the right in the lung, I guess. And this man is still kind of like walking and living somehow. So lung that's shots. Like, that's like my biggest <laughs> yeah. thing. It's like, are they gonna commit? That's like my I need like oh, I can't even say for sure or not. Like if they like that's not my biggest question for next episode. Like, are they gonna commit to actually killing him off, or are they by some miracle is he gonna live a fatal lung like shot it feels pretty bad the way they did it too like this is really like the one way i would prefer of not not have like we just <laughs> learned about his sister they just revive his sister and they kill him off so i was like yep. really what, what do they have to do with this like in this way yeah Hyoga just uh, told you that's why he had to do it now yeah i like yeah basically like, like yeah Hyoga. more it's just like man this, this guy's just a bitch <laughs> dude i told you right Hyoga oh, was like, gonna be the main villain yeah. right so oh, yeah. not that bad so I totally yeah. saw this coming, although uh, I didn't think they would destroy the Miracle Cave right away. That's that's yeah, kind of being set up on that, the next arc. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think that. I, I, I definitely thought, felt like it. Like Kyoga was going to be like the main kind of like villain, in a yeah. star he was going to overtake Sukasa because like you right. know there was really nobody else. But how they did it, definitely I did not expect it. Like I, I still felt like you know uh, Sukasa was going to die in some way. Did not think of anything about the Miracle Cave though. Mm. Um, but it sounds like they even mentioned like where Senku can probably Senku can probably still make it. It's just going to take a lot more time. But the convenience you know factor is now gone. You know what that no, means? But the, more chapters. But the dumb thing is, <laughs> no, the dumb thing about Hyoga's plan is if he kills Senku, right, and you destroy the fucking cave, how the hell are you going to make <laughs> the, the reviving potion? Yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna do this whole selection of the 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 fittest you know like natural law whatever <laughs> but then like dude you there is no one in the village that's smart enough to maybe chrome but that's if he doesn't kill chrome right but oh, there, chrome would be if dead, you, yeah. yeah if you kill senku and you destroy the fucking cave how are you going to revive people and continue your plan like it's it's these these villains that make the dumbest plans <laughs> and they don't think I, about like I the mean, aftermath yeah. that makes you just Me- wander what were they thinking? Maybe his plan yeah. wasn't to revive more people. Maybe he was fine with like how many they had. They're just gonna just gonna live just like that. No, like, he legit says it's gonna be a selection of the fittest. Like yeah, this, he, he did say that. Yeah, yeah there's not gonna yeah. be enough like resources for everyone, so we're only gonna let the fittest survive. Yeah, I mean, that's like, yeah, the, like, the, like the he, maybe like he just like thought that the one the people they have now is fine, and they want more. They'll worry about it. But 
maybe he, maybe he wants like start like like the vi- like their like own village that just have their descendants carry on for next thousand years. Mm. I, don't I mean, know. my fear now is like, obviously, they didn't kill Hyogo. They just, you know, shock the shit out of him. And then you still mm-hmm. have Homura and Yo, who we don't know where they are. Those are terrible they, villains. You know, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm really yeah, sad that they brought back Yo. I could care less if he came back or not, but I guess it makes sense, you know, because we never saw what he did after he ran away. Yeah. Um, but I'm really just hoping as well, like now that to Ku's point, you know, they've blown up the Miracle Cave, they have to figure out like, okay, how do we get, you know, more reviving uh, fluid and stuff? I really hope it's not just like, oh, okay, you know, we didn't kill Hyogo, so now we're going to put him in a cage because we think we got him on lock. And mm-hmm. then, you know, now it's going to be Homura and Yo coming back, releasing Hyogo again. And then it's kind of just like <laughs> oh, repeating this cycle of ongoing you, because like you, they you don't s- kill anyone. So when you, you don't that, kill the Justin? people that are your problem, like... You say that yeah. you make like <laughs> that's gonna like that's gonna be like a sound clip of what happens like next week. We're gonna play it back for you. And, like, oh hey Justin, thanks for the prediction. I mean, I I don't even think it's a like I guess it is a prediction, but it's it's something that's like, but like it sounds like it could not happen. something that's like a big like, stretch, you, but it definitely could happen, right? You put like, it you put it exactly look. the way it could happen, and that's why <laughs> who who has the profit? I, I need to know look. from a profit standpoint where where the dice fall okay. on this one. All right, let me let me put it this way, right? David made a statement or said something similar to like what you're saying right now. You know what he said? Oh, I wonder how Saul was doing. And then boom, next episode. <laughs> Half the episode was focused on her. And you, Justin, by saying what you said, you know, because words have power, you have to believe in that, right? Oh, of that's, course. We've yeah, shown time and time again. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you don't believe in it, it ain't gonna happen. But since you brought forth the words, right? Odds are next episode. But- Bam! It's going to be a running cycle. The, to the be fair, villains. I did I did try to bring forth the words of them turning Sukasa back into stone, and, and look where that got me. Obviously, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm not bad. At, I don't have the best batting average, but yeah, I guess you know we have to it's take fun. with what There's we got. And, and with the with, with the shonen tropes of what we've seen, like it's definitely yeah, the one. I don't that's, know. That's, I'm just going to stop talking because I don't want to make stuff happen. <laughs> that's the one I really hope. That I want to be happen. wrong. I, yeah, I want to be yeah. wrong. It, yeah. Like I, I really want them to move past Hyoga, Sukasa, like all these people, because this has definitely been the weakest part of the show for me. Uh, it's, it's it would be really cool too to see like if there was like another science battle like later on, like if there was like an evil like scientist in a in a sense. Yeah. Um. That like you know somebody who's connected with like everybody turning to stone. Like just get to that. Like just get past like... this garbage. Like. Even like, like when Hyoga got when Hyoga got like shocked, like you know when you know he held onto the spear, and I thought like, yeah, oh, I'll see that too. Let it's it like, go. Yeah, just let it go. Why no, let it just go. let it go. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I was like, I was like, oh my god, I was like, I just need to get past this part. Like they just need to get past these guys, just kill them off, whatever they can do to get away that's from them, so where we don't have to see them again. That's that. I mean, that's going back to my question in the beginning. This is like, are they gonna commit to killing off Sukasa? <laughs> I guess no. maybe, but now, it's, but, but the problem is like Sukasa they need not to man. Yeah, well they need to, but the problem is now they but still like, have Hyoga, which is worse. I mean, <laughs> than, I'm putting, putting, it, putting that aside, it's like yeah, I'm just saying like I don't know, like just like the way we've been talking about the show so far. It's like the fact that we were not sure they're gonna kill them off. That just shows like how much they rely so much on the show and tropes when it's not science. Right, which really sucks. I think if anything, what yeah. would be ideal is to your guys' point is that we learn of this other group that maybe has stumbled yeah. upon like the um the reviving fluid. Because like, obviously, maybe, you know, yeah. this had to have occurred in different locations as yeah. well. Like, oh, maybe, it like, can't be another, the only like one. another yeah. back cave. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, this, so this, this is when the adventure starts oh, to another place. Fingers crossed that happens. Yeah. But... So yeah. hey, if I if I don't get my survival horror, Doctor Stone, then that's give me my death <laughs> note, Doctor Stone, with the, the two <laughs> science battles. The ten... Right. Yeah. Like honestly, the, I think the show could do just fine with just science stuff. Like it doesn't have to like just, force these. I mean, totally. see, for yeah. me, just back to the basics. Like just figure out the mystery of the stone. Yeah. Hell that, yeah. Well, I now, well, now I think it's now with like the. I think with the the like the, the destruction of the cave, like now it's more of like to find something like either a like a shortcut or yeah substitute. something for like a replacement. So they're gonna have to like find I think because the whole plan is basically you know Senku is wanting to revive everybody, so Miracle Cave's gone. Got to find something hey, else. If that's if that's more science, then that's it's good. For I'll, me, I'll take yeah. it. I'll take it. I'd rather yeah. have I'd rather have that. The last thing Honestly, I will say is 
I don't know why, but I really don't want Mirai to be an important character at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of wanted to fade into the Oh, background. yeah. Like, I know yeah. that's really messed well, up, given of the whole relationship between Sukasa and Mirai, and, like, yeah. her having this, you know, very terminally well, ill disease. But it's like, <laughs> I, I really don't want her to have any plot importance. Like, what, I think bro? it's going to be a really cheap... If she dies next episode, it's on you, bro. That's no, 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 on no, your hands. Hey, man, I'll, I'll live with it. No, this is perfect just for where I'll, be the, I'll be the villain. <laughs> just for her to die in the stolen world. <laughs> <laughs> See, th this is the perfect point where they could easily have, like, let's say, like, let's say like, the show doesn't commit to killing Sukasa. Sukasa heals. They both just kind of go their separate ways. Like, he does his own thing, like, because there's a truce. There, but it, where he's not actually like still following everything with Senku, he respects him. But then mm -hmm. I, it, it, I feel like that could easily be like where they just do like their handshake and they just walk away, mm -hmm. and then they I just. Maybe that would be yeah. Around. I would ideally like that to happen. Where yeah. if Sukasa yeah, was gonna live, that. he lives, and he's like, okay, I'm just gonna go live with my sister and yep. do whatever. Yeah. Because I'm really worried of even naming the sister Mirai, you know, which is Japanese future. for future. Like <laughs> I'm really, oh man, the Shonen tropes. Like oh boy, <laughs> like let's not go there. But yeah. you want kids to you know be like, oh wow, yeah, oh haha, her name's Future. <laughs> oh, she did something in the future. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So. Yep. <laughs> we so, shall see. I, I don't know. I, it's oof. It's tough. I mean, the one thing is like it's. I don't know really know what they're gonna do. Um, they have many options, but there's a lot of bad options. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah, it's just it's just wait and see. Which again, it's like that's not a thing we want, you want to say about it's like. Just like the, we're not that we're not confident to not kill off a character. But the thing is, like, like it still sounds like we're shitting. Like, or I'm shitting on the show, but I still like this fucking show. Oh, yeah, I, I like the show <laughs> no. as well. It's just like no, y'all bunch kind of haters. No, oh, God, haters. I still like it. I, I just know it could be better. No. I have faith in this man. It's just we're just at a weak point with Sukasa and now Yoga. So, oh yeah. God, yeah, yeah, and we're ready for for those other characters. the gymnastic chicks and then the Yo guy. Oh, look, look, let's 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 I'll please get Yo out of here. If if Ukyo didn't die, Sukasa's not gonna die from this. Come on, right? All right. Uh, no, I, I, no one's no one's dying today. We'll sir. see. I still feel like yeah, I still feel like this man can survive. I mean, this guy punches tigers, so. Yep, that's right. Yep, yeah, that's right. And yeah. lion? No, you know he didn't. Wait, did he fight lions? I don't know. Is he the tiger? Anyway, he fought lions. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was a lion. Some, okay, maybe it was a lion. One, one of the two. Yeah. Anyway, beyond the point, I'm done. Yeah. I mean, the last <laughs> thing I will say is I I did look back and I saw that the next episode is called Prologue of Prologue, Dr. Stone. Yeah. So oh, that oh, kind of, okay. that's kind of, hmm. I don't know. This, this seems kind of weird to me. Like, are we going to go flashbacks now? Because I are like. We have one episode left. That's it. Or is it it's like a prologue in the sense of we're setting up a prologue for now the bigger story of Doctor oh, Stone? Oh, I hope. I I'm actually just, hope I'm reading so. away. Doctor yeah. Stone, funnily enough, as much as I like, gr like granted it, like. I guess I should give it credit of like how much I do actually like look into things for this show. <laughs> like I don't do that for a lot of others. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, in, in all honesty, with with what you guys are mentioning, right? Since this is the end of the Stone War, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe this is setting up to the arc of what caused the the, the green light or the green wave. That Very true. And now that's the prologue of right. And this is the prologue, so. Yeah, but, yeah I think it definitely does, go. If it's a prologue, though, it just seems like this whole Stone War is so unnecessary. If if it's just no, only no, only really. to establish Yoga but, as like the the well, villain, then no, they needed the cave, and now the cave's gone. Uh, that, that was like the whole kind of goal. Was I think it's just weird to call it the prologue of Doctor Stone when it's like, so what have we been in for these two like, seasons? Was like, yeah, not Doctor Stone? That's the like, only thing. And maybe that's just like weird. Like, Thirty six episodes is a lot for just a prologue. So yeah. So, anyways. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, I'm still hoping they get another season, though. I mean, if not, and this might be one of the shows I'll agree. It's 100% going to get one, yeah. I yeah. think it's still a popular enough show and jump show that it should it should get another season. So Love it. Definitely. I'll take it. Yep. Cool. All right. So I guess that'll be it for Dr. Stone. And then we'll do um, Promise Neverland real quick. We're going to speed <laughs> okay. run this. Oh, speed run this. Yeah, like yeah. the episode speed run. Me... Let me get Sasha's... Uh... SGDQ! His thoughts know, right? on, these, on these latest episodes. Um, okay, so in the words of Sasha, he has said that the promised Neverland has become a parody of itself. All of the suspense is completely gone and everything is way too convenient. They're rushing the show behind comprehension, which, as to your point, David, and as we said, you know, these last, what, four episodes now? That's exactly what's happening. We're literally the GDQ of anime right now. <laughs> We're trying to punch our way to the ending through... Emma's, you know, really brash, idealistic, everybody should survive type, you know, 
um, thought process and now nothing really having much weight to it. Um, and apart from that, Sasha always just said that, or said that um, he was dying at the moment when all the grandmas show up with those really like cartoony looking submachine guns. <laughs> It's just, again, really hard to take them serious when in the beginning of the show, you know, there's a much more psychological kind of fear. And now it's just like really corny of like, all right, we got these guns oh, pointed at these, that, you know, that, that 10 part, year olds. That part also is pretty funny because there's so much like no you like reverse Uno like <laughs> moments happening yeah. with, with exactly. uh, Peter and then Isabella and then the the, the facility and then the civilians come in. It's like so many reverse Uno cards. <laughs> oh, and, and that's the other part that Sasha talks about of like, yeah, it's so corny of like. Oh, all the civilians just showed up? Like, okay, so what? Was this demon village, like, right next to the labs this whole time? And, like, how was there this many people this, that just, this, this you know, many... showed up at the facility and broke in? Not like... only that, they, they took all, like, the, like, I guess I guess they can share, I guess, I was thinking, like, I, th I was thinking, like, maybe, I guess, Mujka's blood was only required, but I guess you could share blood, but still, like, there's so many people. Yeah, so, man, like, it really just makes, you know, from an anime-only standpoint, it's like, what even mattered at the end of it all, right? Like, there's there's no weight to the actions anymore. Everything seems to be rolling the way of human oh. sides, and even the monsters. Everybody's winning. Where I think at the beginning of the show, it was pretty much like, hey, not everybody's gonna win. Like, there are gonna be sacrifices. Now it's like, nah, we're good. And to, to add more, even more, like, it was an insult interview for like Sasha is like, you know, complain about Emma's like idealistic. Besides, at the end of this episode, she freaks out the hand to Peter. He's like, "You should come with us. You'll oh, be free." Man. Like you fucking, yeah. like you, you, you know, you did all those terrible things with Roman, and like you're citing the demons and all this. But hey, we still, we still, I still want to see everyone. So <laughs> yeah, and even even the kids, like you know, playing tag as an escape. Like in the beginning, like the tag in season one had like a very like realistic and rational use. Like here is kind of just like. I guess in the same, like, yes, they used it to, you know, like, escape from the, the grandmothers who were holding them hostage and then escape from the, you know, monsters in the facility. But it's just like, oh, man, like, it, it, everything is starting to feel really corny. And then in Sasha's last words, the only person he cares about at this point, as long as Phil makes it out, because Phil is I know. the true homie at the end of the day. So when like, him and Emma had that reunion, that was the only thing that I'm just like. Okay, I, I feel something here. Like this feels good. You know, so I'll, I'll that say, reunion was nice. <laughs> I'll say like, I mean, I remember like when Sasha was saying like, even after like the disappointment of like what happened, like he was saying it was still some of those episodes were still pretty decent. Like there's so it went from like you know a good show to like more of like an average show. And here they just like mm -hmm. it just threw it all out. It's like you just gave up at this point, basically. Like yeah, you knew like or I don't, know, I don't know like what you were thinking like with the eleven episodes and thinking that you can compress everything like this, but it's like... Even again, as a manga reader, I I can't explain it. I can't. I, this is the first time that, like, literally, even with the author's involvement, it's like, it, it's like, it's like you like, jumped the shark so uh, hard. Uh, author's involvement, you had Cobra Works, you have the backing of Anaplex and Sony. Like, this is not a small indie studio, so it's like... Right? What? Yeah, it's... Is there... Is there any news as to like why they chose this decision? Is there no, anything? Nothing. No, nope. because no, no one okay. wants to say anything. Because you got burned bridges. The, the only thing we had was that the author was you know joining as a uh, assistant to oversee you know the the script writing and stuff. And that I remember he, seeing that. Yeah. He wanted to she. hopefully re or she sorry yeah. wanted to have a um a reimagining because you know admittedly even in the manga fans weren't the most excited with how kind of like the last like third or so kind of played out. So. That was something that for manga fans, they were thinking like, hey, this might be really great then. Like, you know, up until this last ending few parts, you know, we weren't really as hyped as the resolution kind of unfolded. But now it's like you're telling us, oh, you're going to do something different. Like you've had admittedly a lot of time to think about this great new change. And then it's like, oh, lol, nope, I'm not going to do it's, anything. It's, See ya. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I'm down for it. Just, but you didn't commit. That's the thing. Like, yeah, exactly. Which, which again, like you, you have expectations the versus reality, and like, this was the worst separation of the two that I have ever seen in anime. And that's it. I thought you know Tokyo Ghoul was bad. Tokyo Ghoul is nothing compared to what they did here. <laughs> we're not even so. gonna get like a route like B or whatever. It's, yeah. No, yeah, we're not even gonna get a route B. They just got like end it here, just like with just so just sorry, so much so cut content. 
So I have another quick question. So I know people didn't like the ending, but people liked this arc, though, didn't they? Mm. Like, in the manga? Oh, they didn't so, like this part either? Uh, it kind of suffers from similar conveniences, even in the manga. But okay. I will say, in the manga, the like couple of arcs leading up to even before kind of what happens here, like those have so many more characters and backgrounds to both hum humanity and even more so the monsters. Um that it makes it so much more worth. But again, admittedly, mm -hmm. like this is a series that I could say, if you just watched the first season, that could have been fine, completely standalone. This, the series definitely does have a massive momentum change in terms of even like the genre of the show. I would say very much that first season is psychological horror. And now this is much more of a action shonen. Like there is still like, you know, those if you even want to call them horror with what we've seen with the monsters in the, in the Lambda, I'd say the Lambda facility is the most psychological thing that, you know, we even continue to see. So, but again, definitely uh, urge everyone once it's all said and done to read the manga, at least pick up the manga from when they find the, um, the shelter. Cause that arc after the Goldie pond arc that it's called, that one is an amazing arc. And for that alone, you could read that and then you could stop and be like, yeah, all right, if you're not feeling it and want to continue, then it's definitely on my list like i feel so like so cheated like from the second season like feels definitely. bad man feels bad yeah yep. i feel bad for all the fans yeah that's that's all i got and yep. you know thanks sasha for passing along your thoughts we always you know want to have you here in person but we're glad that we could still get your thoughts and theories yeah. for for everyone <laughs> yeah so that's our speed run of promise neverland <laughs> we're on to the next <laughs> show let's talk about jujutsu kaisen with my boy Megami. <laughs> Welcome, Brian. Welcome. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh yeah, uh for Megami's backstory. It's I basically I didn't it's not I hated the guy a few episodes back. I just didn't know anything about him. And then uh -oh. immediately we get like two episodes filled with Megami. <laughs> hello, I mean, I mean, Honestly, you... David. Oh, go ahead. I don't think much happened this episode. <laughs> <laughs> you about I was to get shanked. Say... You about to get torched. I don't know where you live, but I'm gonna find you, sir. <laughs> I mean, Things honestly, are gonna happen. All honestly, right? though, um, like for how cool his, his power was, they didn't really explain what that was. So there, there is that point. Yeah, there's kind of just a a mindset no jutsu instead of a talk no jutsu. Of well, I kind of was talk no jutsu when we get to see you know the flashback between uh, Gojo and Megumi, and even more so um, Megumi in high school. How we kind of see. His ideology was like very black and white of like, you know, if people are evil, then they deserve to, you know, get punished or whatever. And the people that are quote unquote good, he was even saying like he is upset with these people that act good. But secretly, when they see, you know, the results of their actions, they kind of have, you know, evil intentions as well. And so he's kind of just saying like, you know, my way is the only way that things are done right. Like I have this great kind of insight into how the world should operate i guess or at least that's how i took it that was all really that no that was really good yeah. like that, that whole kind of like uh that whole like mega me back part i thought was actually really yeah well and then I, I feel like it was cheapened when we get gojo and he's just like hey man like you're just thinking about shit the wrong way like you got a lot of potential but you're just very narrow-sided and him just like oh my god you're right i am narrow-sided and then to david's point you know we get the flashback where he's just like all right, fuck it. And, he, you know, he gets, like, this very twisted, dark look on his face and just, like, Dude, I don't the, care the, anymore. The crazy like, face. Nothing matters. Let's just do this. Exactly. And that's when <laughs> he, you know, unleashes his uh, partial domain. Okay, I was so. going to ask you, is he, like, is he the only one out of the students that can do a domain expansion? I don't, I don't think anyone else can do it besides we haven't Asu, That's right? the only one we've seen so far, so, yeah. far, so we don't yeah. know if anybody yeah. else can, but... I seriously doubt he's the only one. Dude, like, Toto. Toto, 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 Toto could definitely <laughs> set up a domain if he wanted to. You know what I mean? <laughs> But yeah. just because I only know expansion. like the boogie, I just think of his domain expansion has to be like a dance floor or something, just like completely out there. <laughs> god damn it, Tizzle. Like, just imagine him. <laughs> oh my god, Tizzle, it's throwing but, chat. Yeah. Big butt domain from Toto. <laughs> Hell yeah. God damn it. So um no, it's definitely it was definitely dope though, of, you know, uh Megami just being like throwing everything away and you know, just rising to the occasion of what he needed to do to fight this um curse being that you know we had seen earlier in the season that he yeah. was so afraid of and mm -hmm. again uh sakuna like he's so interested in maybe me like like he they had that uh that quick like scene of him like like sensing you know making means like domain expansion so Dude, I, 
<laughs> yeah, he's just there rubbing his hands like, yes, yeah, yes. I kind of have a feeling like I thought like, oh, okay, like maybe like Sukuna is like wanting like almost like Megumi to eat a figure finger. I was actually thinking about that. I don't know if uh, if that can actually be a thing where you know, like try to force him to eat one of the fingers so then he could, can go yeah. over there. I, it could be. I mean, um, it, that's possible. a good point that you bring up of him being a potential vessel for Sukuna. Yeah. I don't know how like the whole like vessel thing works though. Like I'm not sure like what oh. kind of qualifies you yeah, to be. I, know. But they, I mean, I mean, we do know like I mean, he is from like the the, the Zenin clan. I think the same one that uh is that the same that that's where um uh, Mai and Maki, Maki and Mai are from, and mm-hmm. the other guy, right? That like the, the the guy closes his eyes. That that they're so like, all the same clan, right? So that's just like one of the top notch clans then. I think it's like the top uh, so like so. yeah. I can't like, remember the if the guy who clan. uses like the blood abilities if he's the clan. Guy. The both guys clan. Yeah. Yeah, he's, so the guy like, yeah, so they're all tech basically from the same clan. So yeah. I guess okay. like I guess I guess maybe something in their maybe like their bloodline gives them more powers as jujitsu sorcerers. Maybe uh and then Sukuna jives well with them somehow. Yeah, there's definitely more obviously at play there that we need to yeah. get brought to light. <laughs> Sadly, we have one episode left. Yeah, yeah. But like, I, so. again, this arc it's like it's much more serious than I thought too, because like I was not expecting like, a finger to show up. Like this, like random curse. So, dude, for how many fucking fingers show up? I just feel like these fingers are all over the place. <laughs> I don't know. Well, like, I just, I mean, yeah, because like how many didn't we do like the math last time? I know very poorly of like, okay, we think that Mahito like, and the curse user have like there's 20 apparently, there's 20 yeah. fingers. Yeah, I, I okay. forgot where they I all are. I remember if it was, yeah. Yeah, 20, 10 for both his hands or 20 or what the number was. Because I'm just like, yeah. damn, they're, they're pulling these things out the woodwork. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. So I don't uh, really know. But guys, so so I was talking about earlier with David, right? And then Justin came too. But isn't this basically oh, God. just a rehashed version of Naruto? Oh, my God. Right? Think about this, it. Think about this, it. Right? This, man really, really, this like, man really trying to call my boy Megumi like Sasuke. Megumi is Sasuke. Look at the backstory, bro. Right. God. Look at look at all these like hints and these like these connections. Right. Comes from a, a big clan family. Right. He has like this this like um, like solo player kind of uh, like uh, like mindset. He he should he should technically be the MC, but then there's this orange fuck that that took the spot. <laughs> And that guy is Yuji, right? And then you also got the Sakura of the group, right? Which is the uh, that girl. Uh, what was her name? Kukisaki. No, nope. yeah, no, nope. yeah, Kuki yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So She's we got Kuki cool and we got K- Kakashi over here. Mr. Do you Gojo. seriously just compare Nobara <laughs> oh, oh. to, Sa- to Sakura? Did that just happen? It it happened. Like, it's, it's it's furthermore, the, the comparison is Yuji there. being Naruto. I just thought about this now, which we didn't bring up earlier. Right. But Sakuna is the QB. Yeah, he's Kurama. <laughs> Nar- yeah. Oh my. Man, it's fucking do Kaisen. They, like I, I respect they, you. You do a lot of great things, great. Like but man, you guys surface. are taking stuff from Naruto. What's up? You, you guys up? are taking the most surface level things of all of these characters. That's cool, man. Compare them to Naruto. Ooh, that's man. A cool. It's a three man squad, right? With a, with a teacher. Yo. Yo, think about this. You got Toge, the guy that doesn't talk. That's like very similar to almost like uh, Hino, our um, the bug guy. I know it's a little bit of a stretch, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, it's there. Bit, you know, it's, it's there. there. Just throwing it out there. Uh, Brian, as a Naruto as a Naruto fan, uh, your thoughts? Listen, as much <laughs> as it would be a shame to be directly correlating like Naruto in this show. Ku's got a point. Oh my god! Oh my god! No! Oh my god! Listen! Listen to this! Listen to this! Toto! Toto being the teacher of um, Yuji. Dude, Toto is Jiraiya. Toto's dead. Exactly. Dude, Toto's dead. Totally. Like, no, the totally. thing is, is that legit. Like, <laughs> the characters in the show, like off the, I'm pretty sure, like very off out of like the first or second episode when we get, actually when the third when the chick came in, we instantly correlated to Naruto, like automatically, like we could see it happen. See, so you have you have the the lead of the 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 group, and then you have the three members of that said group, Team Seven, right? And then mm-hmm. you got all these other characters coming and just fitting those roles of Naruto, you know. 
See, the, pro- the problem with this now is I never <laughs> thought of this fucking show with Naruto, and now I will not be able to unsee hey. it. And this was common of Mechamaru is Conqueror. Yeah, and yeah, Tizzle basically just said that's what I was it fits perfectly. Well when I came it, it, it fits just it fits perfectly too. God damn so I'm thinking it. Now, of now you Yo, we, we Naruto you, now, boys. You just made me thought of like how like uh, usually he wanted to do a Rasengan. I swear to God, <laughs> start shooting that oh, thing, right? dude. It's 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 it might happen. Like oh my God. obviously the powers aren't exactly the same, but then you know <laughs> character design, plot wise, Yo, you know, the, the witch girl is, is Tamari. Yeah, you know it's it's we there. Got it. We got it. We're here. It's it's definitely there. See, like maybe he's part of his clan, but the clan is alive. You know, it's he's not like his only one. But that that would have been too obvious, I guess. Yeah, yeah, too obvious. But it, it is partially there, right? So, eh, whatever. You know, just just saying. This like instead still... of instead of a just... brother, he has a sister. You know, you're just saying, right? <laughs> Which is voiced by Yukino, by the way. So, yeah, this this is still Shut way up. better than uh, than Naruto. So, <laughs> oh, I mean, oh, I, I, I would go, I would go oh. that far. You know, listen, let's just say this has all the pieces the to be a just goaded of a shonen. Okay, right, right. agreed. I just I mean, want to throw it out there. I'll take that. I mean, okay, yeah. all that's, I'll, all I'll that, step back. I'll step back. All the comparisons to Naruto aside, I just feel I feel more similar to, to Bleach. It feels like much more of a like a edgier shonen than than Naruto. So fair. So I guess in that regard, then you could argue that they're almost taking a little bit from every of the big three shonen. <laughs> I mean, what One Shonen piece might be the biggest point, stretch, though, you know? but yeah, at this point, it's like what Shonen doesn't take from right. other Shonen. It's they're yeah. the foundation so, of yeah. things for a reason. So yes, agreed. But too. just agreed. A, a funny side conversation yeah. that obviously, as yeah. we yeah. dug deeper, we saw oh. more and more. I mean, okay, so <laughs> See, I, didn't, back, I didn't at all. I, I was just, <laughs> okay. As I say, going back to the topic too, because uh, I, I totally, <laughs> I thought the sister too was supposed to be part of like the clans. So I was also, I was so confused, like why is she like. Ha- why he has to do all this for his sister, and then that's when you find out, oh, she's like a top, she's like the half sister, yeah, that doesn't belong to the clan. So, like, yeah, oh, so that, was, that was the one part that I will bring up too. I thought it was for me, it didn't add much value in terms of like when Gojo first meets Megumi, and he's just like, hey, kid, you got sold by your dad, and I'm just like. <laughs> I don't know. That didn't really do anything for me. Maybe it's just because Megumi like doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, he basically just has an attitude where it's just kind of like he kind of just goes with whatever, really whatever. And it could be just again Megumi just being a big Sasuke troll. Well, okay. Really, his inside he's, emotions uh, are very emotional, he's saying, but he he's doesn't he's, show that because it's not cool to show that. I mean, he's saying, like, <laughs> he, he's saying he has a solo like this like mindset, but like he still really cares about his friends. Like he's really cares about like like Yuji and for now. overall. Oh, for now, yeah, yeah. So but... like. Did, um, but I think anything else you guys really want to like cover about like the main episode part? I have like one more thing to kind of bring up. No, oh no, uh, go ahead, go yeah. for it. Yeah, no. Go ahead. Uh, I was just wanting to bring up the. Or Brian, are you, are you good too? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Did uh, did everybody watch the post post credits clip? Jujutsu stroll. Yeah, Jujutsu stroll. Yeah, Jujutsu stroll. Oh yeah. Oh my god, I did, but I completely forgot it. What happened? That's the one where basically it's like, oh my god, Megumi is talking to a talking to a girl. Oh yes, yes, yes! I have seen that scene recreated so many times, reanimated ev- everything on TikTok. Like people are absolutely obsessed with that scene. Dude, that's <laughs> just so that's funny. So oh, oh my god, that like I said it before, and I'll say it again. Go just pretty damn hot, bro. You came my way. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. That's that. gonna learn how to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh man, that, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> Gojo is the best troll God. I've oh, seen God. in a while. Yeah, I, I just oh, thought like God. that that Juju. Stro- I mean, I, I've liked a majority of like a majority of them. I think maybe one or two have been kind of like just off, but I mean, yeah. overall, I think a lot of them have been like this. This show, the, the, I don't know. I still just love the comedy. For this There's show, much it's serious so stuff that goes down. Yeah, the comedy mix is done. It's that's, done well. It's that's, done well. Why, that's why I forget it's a dark show. Like when this arc started with people dying, it's like, oh yeah, it's actual an actual like dark, creepy show where like there's right? like monsters yep. killing people. Like, yeah. yeah. I would also just like to say one thing too. That little ending clip, the way that Nobata is running, and maybe um uh, Yuji as well, but it actually mm-hmm. is exactly the same way that those Titans run in Attack on Titan, the like the abnormal <laughs> ones. If you oh, look yeah. at it. I saw oh, some. I need, I need to go back and. Uh, it was pretty adorable. Oh, God. <laughs> I love it. 
Oh, man. Oh, my God. Good stuff. It's got some good stuff. This week was good, man. It was a good week. <laughs> it's, wrapping up the se- it's wrapping up the season, so this is where all the good, good stuff thing. happens. Yeah. Yep. I think we're going to there for just Kaisen. Yeah. yeah. Got to wait for next week. Yeah. Oh, God. Final episode. Oh, God. It's got to continue. It, it's super. It sold so much mangas in Japan. It's got to continue. Oh, yeah. yeah hopefully, sure. it's, hopefully I guess it's we're just trying to think of, well. like, okay, what are they going to do? Are they right, either yeah. going to do that uh, Halloween thing that uh, I think they, we talked about it. last week? Yeah. Or I think that's the only thing that you could like slightly tease and now just be like, all right, see you next time. Just, just Bro, yeah. if, if Megumi goes rogue on me, uh, oh, do, I don't know, God. man. We're Tell gonna, you. We're gonna see, Sasuke 2.0. We're going to see, <laughs> see someone give him a chokehold against the wall and say, you know nothing of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys uh, shut your full uh, mouth. Stop, stop insulting. Is it, is it gonna be like his sisters gonna be like secret OP and be like you fool? Well, probably. Oh probably. man. That let me unleash. Let me unleash my shine gun. Like the curse mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I have no it's comments. Not, yeah. I can't. We gotta, all we all I know, it's gonna be stuck in my head now. Everything I see in this show. <laughs> Luckily, only one episode left. Right, right. Yeah, maybe right. I'll for, maybe I'll forget yep. by the time season two comes. Thank God we didn't start this from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. It's it probably always there subconsciously, but we finally spoke on it. <laughs> oh yeah, now we're all, all of a sudden realizing more characters here and there. It's like, all right, well, it's already begun. Hey man, it's not my fault. I just see these things, you know. It just comes to me. I can't help yeah, it. Cool, it's your feel that. Hmm. I'm blaming you. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. So we're right there before Ku crops crops to show you more. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for Jujutsu Kaisen. We're on to our next yeah. show. Let's talk about Mushoku Tensei. Yes. I gotta say, this is probably like my favorite episode, like of the season. It was good. I really enjoyed this episode, and like, uh, basically built off of everything that's happened this season. So, um, Man, really honestly, dude, pretty serious here, guys. He was about to kill somebody. Anything happens. <laughs> <laughs> we just what? saying that perfect. If you said that last episode, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, cool." Like you know, we got some cash. No, we made, honestly, we made a guild. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Uh, please, please explain though. I, I, I yeah, wanna... sorry, Brian. Were you gonna say something? No, I was just, I was just joking. Oh, oh man, oh, okay. oh, this episode was very good. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It, it was. Uh, Tizzle well, just I asked. knew you were joking. I thought I just thought you were gonna say. I thought there was that something was very more convincing. To it. I was just like, oh. My. Yeah. Did we watch yep. the same episode? Like, oh man. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's the problem with these inside jokes. Sometimes they don't they don't hit. Um uh Tizzle just asked in chat to understand the being of Roxy. Is it just basically like yeah. be she's like she took the bolt basically, to um the Asura kingdom and then they're gonna meet up with Rudy, didn't she? Well no no before that no, no, like what does that mean? Oh. Yeah. Like a message board and they yeah, all basically part. showing like all the people okay. who are dead, oh. missing, all that stuff. Yeah. So it, it wasn't just Rudy and his gang, right? It, yeah. That oh. that summoning blast yeah. it happened yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, teleported. Like, yeah. yeah. I thought that was really. I thought that was actually pretty cool to see back, like what, like what everything looks like. Yeah. So I, I first thought Roxy like showed like looked younger. I don't know why. I don't know if it was something with the animation. I thought like I was like, wait, no. is this in the past? It was just hmm. me. Oh, don't, don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, it. There hasn't been enough Roxy. So yeah. right. anything so, like, oh yeah, go ahead, David. I was gonna say like, so I'm surprised how much how involved like his family is. In like, I guess with what's going on with the plot because usually the family is always like sidestep in the plot, but here like mm-hmm. we have like half his family missing, and then Paul with his like with his sister has to go looking for her. So like, so I really like how like they're really, really they're really like um involving, yeah, like a major like you know a major uh, part of the the group into this plot, and so uh, that's making me wonder too like if if. If they're gonna pull like like any character deaths, like if they if one of the family members just end up dying before they even get reunited, if they're gonna go with that angle or not. Yeah, well, so I far think... I think it's just missing. It's just missing, but like Yeah, I just didn't... missing. Like they don't know. I'm, I'm just saying like I wasn't expecting are, like right. I wasn't expecting things to be this bad. So I wonder like how serious are they gonna uh, yeah, take it? Yeah, I mean it definitely gives gravity to this event that occurred. You know, it wasn't just siloed to what we saw with Rudy and them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, I think more so for me, I really enjoyed that we get to see this other side of Paul because, you know, in the beginning in, in Rudy's youth and everything, we get to see like, obviously, we know he's this great adventurer. But as we were shown in the beginning, like he's he's basically just a big perv that, you know, is just there kind of, you know, making comedy. But I think this was the first time in his note 
that we really see that all bullshit aside, he really cares, you know, obviously for his very family serious. and those impacted. Yeah. And yeah, he's very serious. He's saying, hey, I know I don't have the best perception in the world. So that made me think, you know, whatever he did when he was with, you know, the Black Fang or whatever the name of the group was, mm-hmm. it may not have been, you know. Okay. We're back. We're back. <laughs> we're back. Hey, we're back. Oh, what a miracle right. worker. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so it was basically like the, you know, like for the, I'm not sure where it cut off, but um, Man of Disaster, like the, it uh, affected the whole Fatora region, which is basically kind of like an affecting like the whole, like if it affected like a whole state. Uh, so just kind of comparison, like how you said, to Justin that it's uh, Fangs of the Black Wolf. Yeah. Just um, catching up with chat. And then, so. and then we get to see, you know, Roxy meeting uh, two of the party members, right? Is that what we were alluded to? Of, Dwarf yeah. and uh, another yeah, waifu. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they were, they were the... The warrior and the cleric? Yeah, mm-hmm. they were Dwarf. in the, the silhouette yeah. before, right? That's what they're alluding to? Yeah. Yeah, that's, okay. yeah. yeah I like they're, it. So. They're the other members of the yeah. Black Wolf. Dude. Oh, so, okay, so they're not actually going to where... Uh, Rudy is on. They're just well. They have no idea a... where they are. Okay. No. Oh, it, it looked like it was the same. The same yeah, shot. Sounds, like they're both going to the Yeah. It sounded like. They I, were... I guess we don't. Well, so I knew that yeah. at the end, but yeah, I was curious. Like, how do how do they know where? I, guess we, I, guess oh, we I don't think they know. Yeah. I think it's just a coincidence. Like, or maybe, okay, yeah, okay, or maybe that's what we, I thought. Yeah. Or maybe how you guys were explaining it. Maybe it just looks very similar, and we're just just thinking that it's the same place. It could be completely two different places. We just don't know yet. Oh, no, I think um, it definitely is the same place, given how, like, when they showed Rudy and the group arriving, yeah. and they showed, like, the port very distinctly of this town, and then, you know, they show yeah. Roxy and the, the two members also arriving there on boat. If, but, anyways... If this I, happens, I, this, this party's about to get really sick. <laughs> so, if right? they actually meet up, damn, they have a, their own, like, a... Uh... Uh, just beast ass group. Oh, Sorry, and then, go ahead. yeah, no, no. Tizzle gave a, a lot of better context of Paul said specifically in his letter that he would yeah, search he the search. Milis mm-hmm. continent. So they're yep. searching different areas. So they're you know search parties so, spreading across their yeah. their okay. efforts. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't. I didn't way. remember which continent. I, I did. I do remember him saying he was going somewhere. Yeah, I, I totally forgot about that. that. Yeah, yeah um, he, was, I, he was going to Zenith's homeland. Yeah. So. Right. And right. then yeah, because they. I mean, this one, this episode, a bunch of new, no, a bunch of new places, new characters, everything. But anyway, sorry, David, go ahead. Yeah. <clears> well, <throat> the one thing I want to bring up is um is basically oh, like, okay. uh the the hunting quest they're doing with with like Rudy and oh well, I mean basically like with uh, the monster and like I I really like how it was a nice course. it was like it was such a contrast to last week's episode where last week we basically we had Rudy lecturing um Ujured about and how like he had to like explain things to to, to Rudy or, or or no Rudy had to explain things to Ujured about how you need to do things this certain way and now like r- this episode really it really backfired on Rudy and we see and like we see like I mean Ruger like he was he was yelling at Rudy like always about like saving kids but it really like it was such a powerful message this time like because Rudy understood like the weight of like everything that just happened well so the thing is, I kept thinking like <laughs> that, that Falco when, guy got fucked <laughs> yeah when yes, he kept saying like right. when when Rudy kept saying hold hold I'm like thinking what are you waiting for I was like and then uh, where is it's like he, oh we're he, gonna wait till things are pretty was, dire then immediately was, boom Thinking like he could, he was thinking he could like save him at the last second, but I just I mean, saw it didn't work out. <laughs> I mean, did you see how fast those fucking things moved? He wasn't thinking about yeah. that, so no. I yeah. mean, it's, to his point of like he just had this confidence, I guess, in himself. Yeah, as that, as you all just very said, very completely judgment. backfired. Yeah, everything and was backfired. It resulted in the worst thing that he got upset at Rougier for for killing somebody, you know, too quick, like, and then this was the complete opposite of. You didn't save yeah, somebody quick true. enough, that's and true. now yeah. look at the result of your inaction. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know. I thought that was the whole thing was like really well done. You know, like I just remember too, like how like I was saying like this whole time, like at least last couple, last couple episodes, how I was like, you know, why are you following the advice of this guy? I can't, you know, don't you want to do things yourself? And I was like, man, maybe you should just start following other people's advice because it hasn't really worked out for you. Like, <laughs> no, no. Let, let, let's be fair, right? Like. He he has the right idea. It's just execution was bad, and for someone who doesn't have, say, battle experience uh, or like not as a brilliant war tactician, you can't really blame Rudy for what he's been doing. No, so, I just well, the whole I, thing okay. he just he just he just felt like you know he just had to do it like all on his own, which re- when really he completely forgot there's two other party members with him. It's he's not right. up, you know, on his own. Which so, I thought, like that whole thing at the end was really—I thought that like that was really good too, where he just kind of realized, like you know, 
they're they're dead end. Like it's the full team. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's, I, a, it's a stepping stone for him in a sense. Yeah. I mean, so, okay. Like uh, character growth. This is like I feel, I feel I just feel like this time though it was such a huge, much more impact than like than just like, than like the when he saw like uh the first time when he saw someone get beheaded with with Ghislaine, and then then the mm-hmm. second time he saw like the the ant or like the bug person like get beheaded like this right. third this this time like seeing like uh the other guy uh from the other adventure group just die like that I I feel like this time is much more impactful like. Well, yeah, because like, he could have prevented it, too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a bit... So, it's one... It's, uh, it's more so go just, ahead, Brian. I feel like this one, like David said, was a lot more impactful to me because Rudy himself knew that it was his fault that he died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was preventable. Like, he was an innocent kid just dying because he got too greedy about the timing and how it would look and feel if they got in just before they're about to die so it was like yeah. he just yeah. got really greedy for the fame yeah if anything it's it's, really it's, it's it's a big reality check like we've all said and it's more so kind of for rudy like rudy is a 32 year old man like let's not forget that and you yeah. know it may be something that he as coming into this world thinks that he knows kind of you know how things play out it's you know been brought up multiple times in the past of like you know how he would get out of conversations or how he would think like oh you know I kind of know how this would work in the real world where he's yeah. from, you know, that this is how things play out. And now he's trying to adapt that to this new world. And it really is showing like this, this ain't, you know, earth or Japan. Like yeah. you are in yeah. a different place. There are consequences and you have it directly now experienced that. And so what are you going to do about that? And well, like... I thought like the, the sorry, dude, real quick. Uh, the, uh, the other effect I thought was really well done too, or Kurt let, because Rui Jared was also losing the like the where he just kept th- seeing them as children, and then Kurt kind of gave him the realization where I'm go- we're actually adventurous, back, like kids. Like I thought that was also that was also awesome as well. Uh, sorry, David, go ahead. I also mentioned too, like how again, like this, like this bites, this backfires when like when Bojack Horseman shows up and like Fucking again, <laughs> like just shows them like how like he like Rudy thought he was like playing like being smart or playing smart, and they just backfired on them, and he was. And and then this this and I gotta say like this also um gets more uh, developed to um to uh user as well so because he was because Rudy was about ready just to to go off and then and user just like he he realized what was up and he he just like I don't know like <laughs> the Superman glasses came yeah, off the Superman glasses <laughs> came off but like that's a good way of putting it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, but, I, I, mean, I loved it though. But yeah, yeah. He, I think I think he, I think he realized at that moment too how how um how narrow like or how tunnel vision he was on just protecting like them oh, yeah. it's because they're kids. I think he realized that Rudy was trying to do do his best too. So like so many yeah, there's like yeah. so many like tear developments in this episode. So like <laughs> true Tizzle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah honestly like like it's still like i know i would have defeated the purpose like kind of like of the whole message of this whole thing if the horse if bojack would have died but i still wanted it so bad and it, was, it just felt so close <laughs> if, if anything if it's like alt i'm sure that's going to come to bite them in the ass later in the future <sighs> dude i don't know like they're they seem absolutely terrified about this guy like it just i mean even though you you, know, you think you would have known but it's just like just watching them flee even like kind of like the message with kurt and them where you saw this man save you, and you still were like, were, and you were still just like struck with fear. You know, I, that, that, I think that, it was dark too. I right, go ahead, David. I was gonna say, that's a good way to show, really show how, like, the bad reputation, how afraid they are of like, they don't know like, anything about like, like, of like the superbs or whatever. They just like know the story. So that's, yeah, that's like the mindset like, like, that really has to fight. And again, like, just shows like how, how like much like. How a little he was underestimating the, the the scope of the problem. Yeah, well, I mean, and we mm-hmm. also got to see it, just how strong like Rougier is it too. I mean, the guy's well, taking a taking I think a giant. The other thing that we get to see is, and sorry to cut you off, sir, and is how strong Eris is has become. Yeah, and how her training Holy with Galane, like shit. you know, she doesn't yeah. need anybody. She don't need no man to be taking you know care of her anymore. Yeah. He doesn't need Rudy or anyone. Like he put in fucking work taking Dude. out all those monsters. 
Like it mm-hmm. felt like Rudy was the weakest of the group. Like if that's oh. what it feels like. Well, I, I don't no, know about yeah. that, sir. I wouldn't say that. Ah, dude, Did you okay. not see him blast a snake? Listen, man. Oh, but no, I mean, the first are... blast, he was whipping all day. Yeah, like, yeah, like, man. This man, this man has a thirty-three percent accuracy. That's pretty ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah when you have, let's just say, I don't want this man on my Valorant team. I'm not giving him the <laughs> op. You feel me? No, look, well, is, he, like... is he a gunner or, or let's not, let's get this clear? Right? Is, is is Rudy a gunner or is he a mage? Okay, you have to understand. The man's a fucking glass cannon. Okay. I mean, what Rudy showed me. He can't be an, an in-game lead. That ain't happening. He tried that. That that got somebody killed. He can't true, be, you true. know, opping people. He's got, as Brian said, a, a 33% accuracy hit rating. So it's like true. But did he put himself well, there or did he have to like step up and be the guy? I think it depends. Honest? Well, right. I, I think a big part of it depends on like who he's yeah, actually yeah. facing. Like if he's facing melee, like obviously I think he's just get, he just gets burned. Because like I think we already kind of covered that. Like he doesn't really right. have too much of an answer to uh melee fighting. Right. But uh, anyway, but no, even still, like if he's up against Ares, uh, he has no chance. Well, yeah, like, no, it's even even Galen mentioned that, you know, like it's OK for Rudy to be afraid because he's a mage. He's supposed to be in a back line. It's yeah. up to like <laughs> people yeah. like like Ares, who's a swordsman, that they're meant to be up front and take the brunt of the damage. Yeah. And mage is there to just add support with either whatever support spells they have or, or he, like attack spells right? or support. Yeah, yeah. right. But, so, yeah, I mean, you can't really blame the guy. It's a fast ass moving snake, you know, like. Yeah. Right. I thought it was I thought it was cute too how when Eris and Rugiard and Rudy killed the snake and Eris like taps on the the head to see if it's actually dead and she's like it's dead and she just gets you know this little smile on her face and it's again it's it's the small things that I I really appreciate with the different characters and stuff and even more so when that Falco guy got you know torn in half uh yeah. when his group is walking away the guy has him like on his back to bring yep. back his dead body and I'm just like damn like they didn't need to show that and it's just like it adds more to the world of like hey they knew what they were getting into this guy died and like they're bringing back the body to give closure to Mm -hmm. whoever needs it you know if they had a family or whatever it may be even closure for them so right right it's awesome to see yeah uh, it's uh god yeah i don't know i don't don't know if i have really much more to say what do you guys think of like how they like where they ended it because this was the last episode of the season so in the oh, vein so of not. Naruto, you mean a Rougier <laughs> turning into a, a bald ninja? Yeah, he's now a shinobi. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. You probably brought it up, too. He's <laughs> on his ninja way with the rest of the group, now oh, hiring okay. their own I, I'm actually, headbands. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I know we kind of mentioned this earlier, but I'm, I'm actually really glad that they actually, they got past the part of them, you know, where they, they're all a team. And they, where they actually come up with decisions with, with all, like, they're actually going to talk about stuff. And I just feel like it'll should go much better than uh, just one person taking the brunt. Like even like during this that, that fight with the Cobra, where Rudy was like asking uh, Rougier, you know, like can we do this? And Rudy was just like, I, I got this. Like this is easy. <laughs> like where it was just it seemed like it was just like like this is before they kind of had like the conversation, but it seemed like Rudy was like you know reaching out for kind of questions, and answers, just to basically kind of get like a an idea of like what's going on because he's he was fucking up pretty hard earlier on. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know. It's yeah. It's I, I feel like the ball, the ball, the shaved head would probably go better. Um, and also with the 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 bandana as well because it's it's or the headband because it's it's blocking the other eye as well. So I think we should be fine. Except I guess the only issue I would have is like you know if they if they do end up meeting up with Roxy and the other two ventures, like will they see through that? Because I feel like. You know, they because I mean they're like top notch. So I'm I'm assuming like you know will they be able to see through that? I think or will Rudy be able to like? I doubt it. I know. I don't. I think even they do. do, I think Roxy will understand. Like I think she'll trust like Rudy's instinct. So okay, yeah, that that's true. Roxy's there. They basically like she knows Rudy. Yeah, I think I think it should hopefully go fine. We can make assumptions this episode about the teleportation and Rudy and Eric. Okay. So um, I mean. And also, I mean, and also, we 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 knew before too that uh that we we're at uh twenty three episodes. So, but this this, this actually ended nicely. Like, cause you know we had yeah. issues with ReZero though ended the way it, it the first part. Whereas this one, the split core ended really nicely. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a really nice ending. Um, they 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 basically like, they they gave us kind of like some more questions, but they weren't like, but I don't know. It's it's tough to go with that because like you said, we have we have uh was it well, twelve more episodes. You, like I. See, for me, I always, I always consider split cores as one season. So, I'm so excited okay. season one. So, okay, all right. So we'll, we'll yeah, we'll figure out like where it goes from this. But no, it felt like it was a nice spot. Like we don't have to wait on any dumb in the middle of like a cliffhanger fight or anything like that. Or, um, 
it, this just felt like they were planning on it, like planning on ending it here, and it, and I think they did it really well. But overall, I mean, I, what did you guys give the sh- what, what, what would you guys give the show? Easy Twenty time. out of ten, sir. <laughs> Twenty out of ten. It's, maybe it's it's split core, so I don't want to like I I'll, I'll wait till like end of season. The, the no, season, David, so. you can't cop that's out the- like that, bro. <laughs> yeah, cop okay, out. we need an answer. End of this particular part of this whole this, show. Okay. What you give it a what score I, so far? Probably at least at least a nine. Yeah, nine. At or... least, yeah, bro. Really? At least a <laughs> ten. Whoa, you're say that. Yeah. Right. Ah, right, we're done here. We're done here. So, so, you know, let's you know, go. I was, gonna, I was gonna give it like an eight and a half, but maybe that's deep. Like, <laughs> <Whoa! laughs> Find out where you live. I'm gonna tell Sasha. <laughs> <to hit laughs> you up. Critical in terms of my ranking on scale on the ten, but don't get me wrong. Like you know, I came in with expectations of like, oh, this might be like you know a six, seven, like just kind of run of the mill, like you know your normal isekai, and then. Yeah. It obviously turned everything on top of its head, and I was very pleasantly surprised. I think you know there definitely was some episodes though that wasn't a ten. It's not a ten out of ten every single episode. That's for, tough to do though for any for, show, you know. For, well, for me, it's no. like it's a good no. start. Yeah, right? could, so like, nice, but like a lot, a yeah, lot of. I think um, David's point. The, the bigger picture that could be now at play because we've seen you know from what Tizzle linked and Brian linked earlier today, you know the, the map and the scale of the world that they're in. Yeah, everything having its own kind of you know purpose and reason. Like yes, and they're covering has, it too. Yeah, they they're actually covering it. Yeah, yeah. To get to so, that so, nine ten that can give it. Yeah. I think for, it's too early for for me. It's like it's a good start, but like the way that the w- they set up, it's like we need the payoffs. So that's why. That's why I say well, I don't like giving yeah. a score for a split core because we need. I mean, it doesn't sound like I might even not get like this. The end of the next like 12, 12 13 episodes. Like yeah. But yeah, even like even with what we saw, like I thought so, animation was awesome, music was awesome. Um, but it's a good just, start. I'm also like, take, yeah, yeah. I'm also kind of taking it with. Um, I was like, I'm also kind of comparing it to other Isekais as well, ones that came after it, where I feel like they still can't do what this show is doing, and this was like the OG one. Like you think that maybe if anything, like other ones would get better, but this one just feels like it's still so much better than all the other trash that we've seen. A mm-hmm. lot of the other ones. Where uh, it just feels, uh, I don't know. It it I'm. It's almost like, oh god. It's, I don't know. It's. I, I give it a ten actually, just because it's. Of I think this is like would. one of my top. This is well. I, this I've actually got, been <laughs> no, going no, no, through no, my no, list. Wait, so so when we go through tens and don't go like fully into it. But what is another show that is like a ten for you? Uh, just so like the viewers or myself can get a better gauge of like what. Yeah. You, well, for me, it's more, a ten. For me, it's like um, God, it's uh. Let me, let me get back to you. All I know is I really like it. And it's basically like, I, I kind of read it like a quick explain of like. I think it's more of like I read it to like compared to like other shows that are like the same type that I've watched, where I just where I'll kind of gauge it with like how I felt about that one, and then just like how much better it is, or I'll take it from like the ones that like people consider like the best of the best, and like and then just I can compare it to that one. But for this yeah. one, it's like I'm almost kind of going backwards because like like this was like the OG and it's doing everything so much better than like a bunch of the other Sekai's. And it's just like with those things kind of in where you get like uh, where it just feels like we're getting like a bunch of like characters like fleshed out, like the world building that's been really good. Um, animation's been, I mean, animation, of course, is always going to be on my list as well. Animation and music. So, okay. See, um, see this is why I hate, I don't like scores because, like, because you're comparing yeah. to Isekai's when, like, when I'm pretty sure, like, like Justin wants to know, like, what's the score to other animes? Like, so that's why I don't like. Well, I mean, I, I think I it's fair like that a, you, you can have tens in different genres. Like, that's very fair to me. Like, sure, I wouldn't say, like, you know, a 10 yeah. in an Isekai is going like, to be a 10 no one, in a no one's, like, number romance scores is, is series this, or whatever. But... No one's number score is the same. So it's like... And so I, that's, I, yeah, and that's why I'm trying to hopefully like paint a more picture both for ourselves and also for, you know, people watching. Yeah. yeah. You know, everybody has their different scale yeah. and rating. Yeah, because yeah, because my I'm, obviously, like, my scoring is... Uh, and, and I'm not saying like this is a be. way to like point and be like, oh, your scoring's wrong or anything. I'm just naturally curious, and I think yeah. that's something that yeah people would like to be incited about because you know yeah I know like you shouldn't really be comparing like to scores like within like a genre of other shows, but that's kind of like how I've just done it. And just like it also like it depends on like if the if the show has done what I expect the show to do. Like if it's basically like, a, like for me, it's like if it's like a really good rom com or if it's just like a slice of life. If it does its job for me, where I enjoy like all the episodes, like we're really it is what it is. Like it it's doing what it's what I was expecting it to do. I give it a higher score. Yeah. Like this no, is I basically think that's like, of, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what Mushoku Tensei did, and yeah. I can see oh, now yeah. why from that logic you give it a ten. Yeah, so and, 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 and another thing is too, like I had such a low bar at the beginning of this season. 
And I, I did not really, I didn't really know what to expect, and I didn't actually expect too much besides like you know flashy, flashy animation, and maybe that's about it. Uh, and I also thought like because of it being like the OG, I thought like there's gonna be a bunch of flaws, and I haven't really seen that many flaws. So, yeah. So one uh, last thing, I'll, I'll go ahead, David. I was gonna say I was kind of same too. I thought um, it was gonna be, I thought it was gonna be a lot of things that didn't age well. So yeah, I thought, oh yeah, I, I thought like, like <laughs> yeah. So I thought I would enjoy it as much as I did now. So like it, it was yeah. definitely higher like. Uh, beat my expectations too. The rest so, is ahead. Yeah, I, I think that's the only one other thing that I would. I know I can't think in this mindset, but I want. I can't help but wonder, like, if I watched the show without like having that insight from like the hype of the fandom, and even furthermore, like from you know our previous YouTube videos, people yeah. telling us each week in the comments, and thank you guys so much for the comments as always. Yeah. Um. You know, like, hey, you know, if you're liking this, you can't wait to see what happens next. And, you know, that admittedly does set this bar in your head. So I can't help but think, like, would I still walk away at the end of the day if I had no insight? I wasn't seeing what people had said about this. You know what? I'd be like, oh, yeah, this checked all the boxes. I think it would. I think it would. I just don't know. I think think it would. Like, I think you you have enjoyed, um, like, episodes here and there. And I think this last episode would have, like, would have, like, put all like the previous episodes into perspective so i think i think like, it would have been like almost the same yeah yeah because I, I think going into the show like i don't know if i really heard anything much besides uh from tizzle um just about the show um i think that he was really the only one that i looked into because I, I don't really <laughs> go to reddit or anything too much so i didn't actually really know what to expect um besides like i just only watched the trailer because that's all because i always watch like the pvs for new shows and i thought i thought it looked awesome but that's all i had because I've also thought a lot of other shows have looked very nice and been trash. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think it's definitely a, an interesting kind of thing that we now step into as these podcasts continue to go along. Now we have this, you know, continued conversation of anime yeah. original viewership mm. versus those who know the source material and how that kind of now plays effects into, you know, yeah. but, how okay. we're digesting and seeing these yeah. things. So yeah. But so, going forward, my my rating is terrible. So don't don't go by my, my ratings and stuff okay. like that. If you want to, you can follow my anime list though. So and just uh, then shit my uh, my my, my, so, my uh, smooth. So, so that, I come in that shameless plug. Uh, anyone have any <laughs> closing thoughts? Because we need to, we need to wrap this up. So yeah, that's true. Does anyone else want to give their scores and their explanations? Uh, in all honesty, I would give this a nine out of ten, just because uh, you have to be able to get through like all the etchiness from the first two episodes. That will totally drive oh, away yeah, some, one thing, yeah. some potential like watchers right and then as the as the series goes on it kind of dies off where it's not as severe but it's still somewhat there kind of like with these last two or three episodes there's only maybe a couple of instances where those like some perverted like moments in the show where it showcases like the bad side of rudy right where you remember that he's actually a 32 year old guy in a 10 year old body or a 12 year old body or whatever um but if you're able to get past that, make it to episode three or four, like the the world building, uh, you know, the plot, the characters, there's so much detail that's put into everything, I feel like, that makes it such a great show. And then, like, for me, as a person who likes the etchiness and, like, these isekai worlds, like, I would really personally give it a 20 out of 10, just because I think everything <laughs> was hit perfectly for me, right? For me as a person. But I think normally, uh, like, from a general point of view, it's it does have its flaws. But I think other than the, like, with how etchy it is, it's actually, like, pretty damn near perfect with, with everything else, so. Comedy's been really good, too. But, yeah, a little, if anything, just, I think, but I think we all expected that there was going to be, like, etchiness. Right, um, but, to, but to a certain extent, though. Yeah, you know? right, right. Right, definitely. Right. Brian, you get the final word. <laughs> uh, I can't, I, I actually agree with Ku, like, pretty much 100 percent what he said like overall i'd probably give it a nine like he said for etchiness aspect of this is a, like literally midlife dude in like a child's body so there's that um world building animation it's great animation is a little bit different than in the beginning you like automatically adjust to it uh action sequences the choreography of the fights are very well done the camera paneling is fucking phenomenal. Music's great. The world is great. Like explaining the background through like ancient stories and stuff. It's just genius. Even for like an OG of an OG of a series, it's like phenomenal. Like the edginess is 
fine once it's after a certain point. It's it's great. It's good. I mean, yeah. 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 Also, like the Sorry, opening sequence. Sir, well, this is through. Brian's last well, word. Yeah, right. <laughs> to your point, I was gonna have the same thing as Brian yeah. said. The opening sequences yeah. and now they don't make it like a thirty second repeat every week. That makes it standalone enough in itself. So. Yeah, they yeah. give you more of the world. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brian, for the final word. We're in it here. Sorry. So Sorry. That's it for Sorry. Shoku Tensei. Always like for like every week. Thank you guys for all the the, the comments on our YouTube videos. Um, Classic Ulysses, Brohith G, and Ayush. I forgot you guys last week. I don't know how I did, but thank you guys. Code number twelve. F V A K H God Summer Jazz. Capital I or lowercase L? I don't know. That's all you had for your name. Azrael, Emperor Dark North, Ronan, uh, Infinite Ones, Kirk, Smile Please, Tiger 10. Thank you guys for the comments for like the, for the podcast. All right. And then, yeah, I want to thank the audience for joining us today. Thanks, guys. And Twitch chat. Always appreciate having yes. you. Yeah, thank, of course. Twitch I don't know if you're still yeah. here. This <laughs> thank you guys. Thanks, thanks for showing us. It was a lot of fun. Same thing to Darren. A lot of fun. Yahoo as well. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, for the Razor Hub. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys thank always for yeah. giving and, uh, us the context that we missed out on. Yeah, Tommy forty seven. Tommy, thank Tommy, you. Yeah, thanks for showing us too. So always appreciate it. Uh, thank the panel for joining me this week. Thanks, guys. Always, we had a lot of good discussion this week with so many, so many of the uh, heavy, and the season wrap up is brutal. Yeah. 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 So that's gonna be it for us from this week. We'll yeah. see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.